I found the problem. <laughs> oh, that reminds me, I'm gonna mute this. <laughs> where have you got me? Are you, like, where? I wanna hold this as close as I can, but not. Please don't make me look short. God made you look short. <laughs> yep. Like that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no problem. Sorry, man. It's just a head pair of headphones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Friends, welcome to the Barry Molson Center. It's time for the Navy semi-final action. I'm Stephen Stamp alongside Matthew Carrick. We will be bringing you all the action tonight, and it should be a dandy. We've had things firing up even in the pregame. There was a dispute over when the balls came out from the visiting Cyclops. Um, somebody may have tossed a ball over to them a little aggressively, and uh, it, it took off from there. We saw players and coaches getting in each other's faces, some spearing with a, uh, with a stick. I mean, there's some stuff going on down there. Yeah, it was a little bit messed up there for, for a bit, but this is what's been going on between these two teams for a while. Like you said, uh, you know, may have gone back and forth in a couple of venues over the, the practice balls, uh, but we got a game to do. Southwest Cyclops, our player to watch. We'll take a look at the youngster, Dan Keen, one of the favorites to be the rookie of the year. And his numbers dropped off a little bit without Mike Burke protecting him on that side, but still 16 goals for 31 points this season. The offense flows through him. He's going to pick up a bunch tonight. And he is a shooter. That guy is a, a sniper. He shoots hard. He can shoot from anywhere. On the other side, um, maybe the only guy in the game who's a better shooter than Dan Keen <laughs> is, uh, is Mike Teeter. Caleb Wiles has... Uh, has uh, a say in that as well. But Teeter, seven goals in the season finale. He has been on fire, led the league in scoring. You see the 20 goals there. And he has really stepped up his game through the course of the season. Big thing, Brad MacArthur had a chat with him, wanted him to step back, not try and take too much on his shoulders. Teeter listened, and the offense bloomed from there for him and the rest of the team. Our starting goaltenders, first for Southwest, the man who was in the Battle of the Beards competition coming in, and he trimmed it before the game today. Yeah, that didn't work out for Sampson so much. When he got rid of his, uh, things kind of went downhill. We'll see what happens for Jay Priest, one of the more spectacular goaltenders, but he was front and center in that mix-up at halftime. Front and center in a couple yeah. mix-up previously in Sealax was Angus yeah. Dinley. He gets yeah. real testy when guys get in his crease, so yeah. That I, I anticipate something may happen there if guys start to get a little too close to Angus Donnelly, but it's pretty point. much the front runner for top goaltender and MVP oh. of the season and any other award you want to throw his way. Angus Donnelly, uh, you know, the best player on, on the floor all season long. He's yeah. led Barry this far, and I expect him to do the same tonight. Yeah, he's been outstanding. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with the opening faceoff. It's Sealax semifinal action right after this.
All right, welcome back, lacrosse friends. We are seconds away from the opening face-off. I'm Stephen Stamp, joined by Matthew Carrick, bringing you this Canadian Lacrosse League semi-final, and it should be a dandy. Tensions are high, the excitement is up. We've got a nice crowd in the house here, and uh, it should be very good. We're gonna go down to the national anthem, and then we'll be back with the opening. shot of Jay Priest, the goaltender for Southwest, and he does have a bitter beard left, but boy, he took a lot of hair off before this game. <laughs> 15 minutes is up on the clock. We're getting ready to go. It'll be Mike Gillen heading out to the face-off circle for Barry. He's been taking the face-offs all year on the, uh, the other side. We're gonna see uh, Pat McCrory taking it. The hand is up from the referee, just waiting to get things started. The volume is up. I've often said I was just gonna go there. Barry's had one of the best fan bases in all of lacrosse. They've deserved this since day one. This team has been through a lot, but since Brad MacArthur and Angus Donnelly have showed up, uh, things have kind of turned around. A couple more players in about that same one or two week span, but yeah. these fans deserve this and uh, here we go. And what you're talking about, of course, is the first Sealax playoff game in Barrie. The officials tonight, Blair Ferguson, Brent McCauley, and Mike Sullivan out on the floor. Southwest gets the first possession. We have a, uh, behind, a shove in the back. And Southwest will keep the ball. Matt Spanger will head to the bench. And the Southwest is starting to run out of jerseys. Matt Spanger's wearing 13 because his 45 was, was ripped up in a fight earlier in the year than last week or a couple weeks ago. Eric Petrie gets in a fight with Eric Shule of Durham. His jersey gets all ripped up. He's wearing 16 tonight instead of his usual 32. Well, they were going to put him in 99. That one was ripped too. So <laughs> Jeremy Talevi said they're going with lace-ups next year. Gillen gets the ball, comes down, shoots well wide. It ev evaded a bunch of Cyclops. They're going to say it's not over and back. I'm not sure why. Now they do blow it down for the over and back. I thought I saw them waving it off. Well, the Southwest player was, was helping close. Helping the officials? Well, he Southwest was close, so if they're okay. the closest player, Later, right. they get there, and then as he pulled up, they got the call. So Brady Hesseltine, one of the other big offensive threats, gives it off to Keene. He's rolling across to the top. First shot of the game, no problem for Dinely. Picked up by John Ray. Long outlet pass yeah. just out of the reach of Mike Modsley. Modsley, one of the real transition threats for Barry. Here comes Southwest back up the other way. And there's that shot from Keene we were talking about. He's got the little one step, the, the field release over the top, and he likes to go there. Hesseltine trying to roll down low. Now he's coming up across the top. He'll do the jump shot. That's the one. Ball loose for Shepley. No, you gotta pick that up and carry <laughs> it out before you take the shot. And tries uh, to just scoot, tries to just swing at it. Shepley not familiar with the rules. He hasn't played a whole lot of Sealax. I believe he just got in the one game of the season. Here comes Shane Scott. He's gonna let it fly. Sidearm stopped but the rebound is picked up. Barry will hold on to it. Griffiths has to go down and block the ball nicely. And they'll set up in the offensive zone for really their first possession. Caleb Wiles getting a pick from Griffiths. He trips over the foot of Dan Keene. Keene's back playing defense. 
They go to the far side. It's not picked up by Levick. He loses it again, and it's scooped up. Here they come the other way. Travis Burton's shovel Look pass, out. but doesn't quite get it connected. And Griffiths, here comes Barry the other way. Griffiths nearly leveled, I believe. Pardon me. I want to say Lubchuk there because he was coming across the center. Reaching back for the ball. It was a bit of a suicide pass. It was so, so slow. There's uh, Rob Coger bullying his way in. Then he gives it off. And the first penalty of the game coming as Teeter is held. Quick stick across. Just a little bit too low by the time Caravello got it. He gives it to Coger. Goes back to Teeter. They've got three to shoot behind the back. Save by Priest. Nice quick release there by Caravello. Eric Gilton is going to go for a hold here. He did an excellent job. Rob Coger uses his size to barrel into the defender. Not sure if we're going to see the whole play on replay. But Gilton did a nice job to slide over and help out. But that took him out of position. And by the time he got back up to the top point, he was uh, beat by about half a step. Had to get that arm out and, and grab on. And that's why he's in the box here. Yeah, Gilton and uh, forced to grab him. These guys are so dangerous. You want to keep them contained. And he basically just lost containment after the big Coger move, as you mentioned. There's a shot by Wiles. He will rip it from anywhere. That one's going to go up into the seats. Southwest comes back the other way. Well, it's funny. We've been talking about it. A lot of these very offensive guys, you think of them as pure shooters, but they use their feet a lot to create those openings and, and to make things happen. So a lot of running on their sets. Southwest with the ball, taking some time up in the other end. Ross Smith working hard. The pass across anyway, though, as it was ripped over by Blair Goss. He is a solid hunk of defender out there as well, but up in the offensive zone. Now Bear, now Southwest backpedal into their own end. And here come the Barry Blizzard with a minute and a half still to go on the power play. Wiles gives it off. Shane Scott looked to shoot. Wiles will. That one stopped by Priest. It comes flying way out. Spanger is away to the races if he can pick it up. Wiles coming back to get a stick on him. I, Stop. Thought, yeah. I thought Spanger actually intercepted that. I didn't think it went all the way through on Priest, but Spanger couldn't pick up in time. Yeah, I think you're right because how quickly the ball got out there. It was knocked down. Spanger just had a little trouble corralling it. Teeter with the ball. He took a look for a shot and instead gives it to Wiles. He's gonna let it fly, but a stick gets in the way. Stick on stick by Spanger, eliminates the shot potential. Here's Priest with the outlet pass to Keen. Hustle back by Scott. Keen, nice position. Oh, what a save oh. by Donnelly. Great play by Keen to get that shot off, but Donnelly equal to the task. And look out, if Donnelly's on his game like that, it's gonna be a long night for Southwest. I've heard a few people saying Donnelly is due for a bad game. That's because he hasn't had a bad game In all year. In four years. <laughs> I had a couple shaky ones last year. There's oh. the first goal. Dan Keene diving across the crease. Tucks it home. Southwest goes up one to nothing. Shorthanded. What a way to start the game with some energy from Dan Keene. Yeah, we set off the top. He would be the guy. And one, two white jerseys. And then finally the dive in the top corner. Looks over to make sure he landed in time. And Brent McCauley there with the call. Not much that Angus Donnelly or the defenders can do there. They just got beat. It's just a great play, individual effort by Keane. And he dives, keeps that foot out of the crease. We got Scott and Caravello on him, but uh, they just weren't weren't able to stop him. And you can you see know, those aren't your two main defenders. You That's can see thing. that replay as they both went in to sandwich him in the boards. Keane sensed it coming and he shuffled a little to his right that opened the, the lane to the net. And I believe it was Shane Scott, mostly an offensive guy. He's played good defense, but he was the guy that allowed that lane to open up. Over and back for Southwest as the restraining line is the line of demarcation for over and back when you're shorthanded, which Southwest still is. A.J. Masson comes up with the ball. They're just going to wait until that penalty expires, I would think, unless Teeter lets it rip, which he does. And we've got even strength, the man coming out of the box. That could have been dangerous. Not the best time to shoot, but Barry was aware of it. Got one player off, and Jeff Griffiths got back. Here they come, rushing down again, cross-handed shot. Just did not get anywhere near the net. That one kind of took off on Pat McCrory there. I think with Gilton and coming out of the box, they were okay taking that shot. If it's uh, someone like Eric Petrie or a Dan yeah. Teen, He's they'll think push otherwise. It up more. Yeah, good point. Mike Teeter takes the pass. He goes down low. Quick release oh. on the pass by Wiles. Nice look, but it didn't quite connect with Maudsley. Maudsley Big collision, of, we've got a penalty coming, go ahead. Maudsley kind of gets lost with all those superstars down there, but he's had an incredible season himself. Keen with another shot off the break. Southwest, a good scoring opportunity, but Dinelli swallows it up. Barry has taken the penalty this time. It's Shane Scott heading off to the box. Two for the illegal cross check, and Southwest has a chance. 
to extend their lead, which is one nothing, five and a half minutes into the first quarter. Yeah, they've scored shorthanded and now they'll get their power play look started up top by Jordan Critch. They, there's a lot of great sticks out there even without Mike Burke, but they have sort of struggled to find their footing a little bit since he left. Critch is really the creator out there. He got a uh, an assist, now he's gonna take a shot. Dinely grabs that one. He got an assist on the first goal by Keane. Didn't do a whole lot for it. Here's the long pass oh. for Teeter. Priest is gonna run out and get it. He's out of his crease. Teeter goes after him, cross, a shot across <laughs> you, the floor. You know Priest they were using coming. A stick, yeah. Priest very involved in the pregame. There's Keane back across. Oh. What a save by Donnelly. Back and forth passing. Here comes Caravello the other way. He's looking for Teeter. He's gonna just run out of it. But Priest got involved and actually speared Wes McDonald in the throat with that goalie stick. Yeah, that's so a it good has been guy put you to put, pick on. Yeah, it has been put to a lot of use tonight. Here comes Rustbridge back the other way. It's a back and forth game. We expected a lot of running with these teams. We've probably only had four or five offensive sets and we're almost halfway through the first quarter. Here comes another one. Goss will toss it off. Critch passes it over. There's Blair Goss taking a shot. Michael Teeter comes up with it. He's got red shirts all around him. Pressure from Petrie, who's a really good defender. Some offensive pressure there. Oh, Dinely. Nice pass oh. by Dinely. He can throw the ball, as we've seen over the years. That's a laser all the way up the floor. A.J. Masson has the ball. 12 seconds to shoot for Barry. Sounds like the official's calling for a reset. Or is that one of the coaches? No, the coaches are, okay. are asking them to get back in position. Uh, okay. Here comes... Koger dives, shoots, scores! Oh, I thought he the was foot was close. Close. I thought the foot was in the crease too, but Blair Ferguson's opinion is the one that matters, and he says that's a great, good goal by A.J. Masson diving across. Let's see. Oh, that's oh, close. Uh, I don't know, Loop Chuck kind of in the way there. We'll see. Yeah, see if we get another look, but I think it was very close, but Masson, what a great play to dive across. I think he's okay. But, no, oh, you know man. what, he's on the line. Yep. Yeah. The right foot. And this is, a, this is a hard one. You see Ferguson, he's backing up there to get out yeah. of the way of the play. So his frame of reference is a little bit off there. But we've got a tie game here and both, go both goals coming shorthanded so far. I'll tell you, it was really close though. See another angle in it. We, ha we just had a chance to look at another angle and uh, it was very close, very close indeed. It counts, it's 1-1 and we near the halfway point. We're getting close to official's timeout territory. We'll have some, show you some footage of that pre-game excitement. <laughs> As a, a little leapfrog being played there, the ball comes out, it's trapped. We're gonna go to the break nope, halfway yet. through, but <laughs> not yet, don't go anywhere. Pushing and shoving, Car Caravello getting into it. Spanger comes in to step in. We told you that that business wasn't done. Brady Hesseltine getting involved. Not the first guy you think of to be in there with the pushing and shoving, but nobody backing down. And there's Shane Scott having a talk about the penalty that he took earlier. A lot of shoulder shrugging on both sides. <laughs> They'll have to hold. agree to disagree as, we, <laughs> as they tend to do. So we're gonna take a look. Here it is, here it is in the purple shirt, GM Rob Blaze Della Berry in the other in the gray shirt is head coach Jeremy Talevi of Berry. Here there's Jerry Jay Priest with the goalie stick. There he is spearing a player in the throat. Chad Asseltine of the uh, league gets in. Priest is really riled up. You can see Talevi trying to get the league representative to get let him go. It's not over. You think it's over, but it's not at this point. There's Talevi still having some words. Priest has lost his goal stick. One of his teammates gets it back for him. And now Priest heads right back over to have some words. And that's the uh, either the trainer or the equipment manager for Southwest in there trying to play Peacemaker. Again, that started. Southwest asked for their warm-up balls and Talevi was giving it to the Barry players who were already out for their stretches and their warm-ups. And uh, one player actually turned around and not very lightly pushed, it, pushed, pushed it back yeah. over the line. And that started Talevi going off. And when the, the players saw that, that one cooled down pretty quickly, though. As Talevi went down into the tunnel, there was some more words back there. 
But then as they came back out, Rob Blaisdell and Talevi, as you see, got nose to nose. And well, there was more after that as uh, Blaisdell and Talevi were bumping chests a big end a bit later. So Southwest, here we go, 1-1, one, one, Southwest with the ball. A little back and forth by Jordan Critch with those bright orange shirt shoes, but it's picked off. Here comes Jason Crawford. He's got some wheels, he is flying. Scores, Jason Crawford all alone, rips up the floor. He is always a threat in transition. Unassisted goal for Crawford and it's a beauty. How excited is that guy to score? Here's another look and my goodness, what a finish too, crossing hands. Mid stride, you can see the wheels, even as we slow it down, he yeah. looks like he's moving. That's just straight transition out of Barry. That's their game, when they can get that rolling, and that's really what starts to open up opportunities for Teeter and Wiles in the set. You set off the top, the quick releases that those guys have, yeah. and it really, the defense of Southwest doesn't have time to get comfortable. And you really saw Crawford, it's a heads up play, getting the ball in one, the stick in one hand, and flying, uh, and flying up, I mean, it's, uh, you know, really helps you get your speed going. There's a shot by Koger, and he is held by Eric Gilton, and he's going back to the bench, to the penalty box. But, you know, Crawford gets that stick in one hand and lets him really sprint. Then after he's created the space, he's going to take the shot. Here's Koger driving to the net, and uh, I'll tell you, that was, uh, that was really something. We're going to just throw in a quick shout here to Taylor, she's turning 11 today, big lacrosse fan. And uh, happy birthday to you, Taylor. We're glad you're watching. Uh, great to have you along, great to have everyone who's watching along. It's already an exciting game, two to one for the Barry Blizzard. Caravello takes the ball up to Scott. Wiles gives it back to him and switches spots, opens a space for Teeter, who wings it off the post. Hits Grease on the way out, but no danger. The ball is still loose. What a job Honestly. by what a job by Petrie reaching around his back just to dump that one into the corner, then chase it down again. Wearing the 16, not the 32. They did get the C on his jersey, which is nice. The uh, captain of Seth. Oh, oh that boy. ball gets by! Oh, Jay Priest gets burned by a tough bounce. Mike Monsley is right there to pick up the loose ball. Priest has no chance. He tried to play it off the backboards. It got by him, and that was that. 26. Seen some funny stuff happen down there in that net. Earlier in the season, John Cheeseboro wore the GoPro and said, there's a light that shines through. It's dark out here this evening, yeah. so that's not a factor, but something something funny happened there to Jay Priest. You could see a three on nobody, and the beneficiary, Mike Modsley, like I said, he gets lost in that offensive set with all the superstars and potential award winners and nominees that they've got, but Modsley's played a great role in the offense and in transition, he does open up a lot of space, but he's a finisher too. Smith gets the ball up to Gillen. Great work by Smith off the faceoff. Gets it over to Mike Gillen. Those are two of the hardest working guys you'd want on, the, on a team. And two guys that Brad MacArthur and Rob Blaisdell really wanted to be a part of this team as they built the team to be bigger, tougher, just harder to play against. And they are both that. But here comes Southwest back the other way. They just lose possession. It bounces away. Pat McCrory's been very involved but not being able to get a lot of really good chances. Hasn't, I'm not sure if he's even got a shot on net, but keep an eye on him as he has some wheels and a good sense of when to go. Barry taking their time on this possession. We've got five and a half to go here in the first period. Oh, a nice little reach around shot by Wiles. Goes off the post or Priest's leg. I think it was the post and up, almost up to us. Yeah, I'm, I'm nervous. <laughs> Priest, <laughs> or Wiles takes the ball. Teeter takes the pass. He's got oh. Rustbridge on him. He takes the outside shot. May not look like the best shot selection, but I'll tell you, these guys can score from out there. Teeter wants it back. He's setting up in the shooter spot and we'll get it. He Look always to does it touch it in the offensive set. So you knew it was coming there eventually. You could see how quickly Giltman got out on him that time. And now we're gonna have an illegal illegal uh, pick. Teeter is mixing it up with Giltman. They're still having some words. That's usually Caleb Wiles' role, is to be yelling at the other team as they go to the bench. But this time it's Teeter taking it on. Keen loses it, but it goes straight to Hesseltine, gets away from him, and the ball is just, I don't know if they've got slick balls out there tonight, but they're just bouncing away from people. The Priest won the biggest example, of course. What is this, Super Bowl, all this talk about the, uh, <laughs> the, rubber, we're, the rubber we're playing with here? That was in the championship, AFC Championship. 
Well, we're in the semis. There, we, there you go. That's true. It's the same thing. Here we go. Shane Scott with the ball. Big move, but staying with him is the defender. Childerhose. Now Keen trying to cover him. Scott with the ball oh. for a long time. Gets a shot off. There it Reese is. Drops on top of him and gets back up. As Scott wound up in the crease, and now Caravello with a bit of a push as he walks off. Nothing big is going to happen. No penalties. And Shane Scott goes and gives Jay Priest a tap. Shane Scott is not no. an agitator. And you can tell, he uh, you can dive into the crease. You have to be going away from the goalie, and Scott was. Scott's diving out towards the top of the crease. Priest really just turned to see the play and, and kind of walked into him. There's a shot at the other end, and Angus Dinely handles it. But as we said, these are two goaltenders that get a little testy when guys get a little too close to their house in there. And uh, Jay Priest, a little oh, bit of a pass off to Teeter. He's coming down. He's got somebody with him. Scored! <laughs> Used Wiles as a decoy on the far side and just rips it. Michael Teeter is stoked, and he's got words for Priest now. He's not going and tapping Six, Jay Priest. He is letting him have it. Yeah, and Teeter on his way to the bench. We just look at that shot, and three on one. The other guys were Caleb Wiles and Spencer Janes in that set but after Teeter had words with Priest and words with Gilton and he ran past the bench words for the bench he walked past Brad MacArthur MacArthur tapped him and gave a bit of a whisper in his ear and I thought that was going to calm him down a bit there's a battle off the face off nobody can get it we're going to have there's been there's a been a whistle here yeah Brad McCauley has drawn it and we're going to have a re-face off Something was going on along the restraining line before the draw, which isn't all that surprising given the high testosterone that is going well, all last, over the floor. Last week we had three battles before the opening faceoff. Yeah. Here they don't even let them get that early as we get it before the opening stretches. Scooped up by Gillen. He takes a big hit by Petrie, finishing the check just after he throws the pass. Goes over to Koger up for an offensive set. There's a shot from the outside. Oof. Priest falls on it. He thought it might be getting behind him. It was. He grabbed it with his hand. As John Ray ripped that one. She had Coger, Ray, and Gillen. Three D first guys who can all contribute up in the offensive zone. And now Ray just runs back to play D as Giltman gives the ball off and heads to the bench. There's the cutter. Critch can't quite accept the pass. Ray doesn't know where the ball is, so Critch is able to get there. He went through the crease, though. So when he taps it over his teammate, it's Barry Ball. Dinley's looked pretty good in his crease after making that big save early, but Jay Priest has looked uncomfortable. Even on that save, he wasn't sure where the ball was. Not a good set for him. And, uh, of course, we saw that one played awkwardly off the off the glass. So Here's the pass across, the dip and dunk. Nice save by Priest there, who is ready to face that shot by Levick. Barry gets it back, and that stick comes down right on the head of Mike Teeter. Don't see a penalty hand up anywhere, so that's going to keep oh, playing. Oh, mine was up. Yeah, I saw yours go up <laughs> immediately. Stick came down right on the crown, right on the helmet of Teeter. Here's a shot from outside by Levick. It gets knocked down right in front of him. He almost gets it back, but it's Childerhose making the pass to Keen. He can't corral it. Nice work by Teeter to turn it back up the other way. Southwest had a three-on-two with the defenders being Teeter and Wiles, if they could get that one. With the hold up here and the delayed whistle, they'll... They're going to uh, call that an over and back, I think, because uh, nobody really possessed the ball. It just kind of bounced around up there. It's a bit of a break for Southwest to get the ball back. Hesseltine looking to the far side. Now he makes the pass over. Drive to the net, the shot. He gets buried into the crease. It bounces back out. Southwest may get it, but the, the, we're running out of time anyway. Here's Cameron Rowe with the ball. They're going to try and push him over center, but he bears, holds his ground nicely, gives it to Maudsley. Gilton and all over the place. You can see why he is one of the nominees for Defensive Player of the Year. There's Monroe getting it back <laughs> over to Gillen. Gillen with the shot. That almost snuck through wow. Priest as well. Now Priest looks for the outlet pass. He's going to McCrory. McCrory runs into a wall in Shane Scott. And he's going to get called for the ward off. They're still tangled up. And McCrory is holding on to the stick of Shane Scott. He's still got it. Shane Scott has to let go to get it free. And there it is, the first ward off in Sealax history. <laughs> uh, I know I'm not supposed to laugh, but you got me on that one. Well, I'm not supposed to say it either, but. <laughs> There's Dustin Caravello. He just can't believe how much room he's got and lets it fly. Even there, Priest is looking around. He had it underneath him, but he just does not look comfortable tonight. I don't know what it is. Some nights you just feel on, some nights you don't. Angus Dinley has felt on all year, and he's on tonight behind the back shot. 
by Rusbridge. That doesn't connect. Goes straight back out. What a save by Dinelli. Went straight to another Cyclops. Cyclops. Cyclops is singular and plural, right? I don't know. Because a Cyclops is a guy with one eye. So a, a group of Cyclops, I believe the term is a bevy of Cyclops. The is team in still, red. Is still Cyclops. That's the plural. Jeff Griffiths takes the ball. He doesn't get a lot of offensive shifts wearing those lime green socks. There's the pass across, quick goal! Oh. What a finish on the far side off a beautiful pass by Caleb Wiles. That's Zach Tompkinson tucking that one home. You had us in awe of the turf dog socks on Jeff Griffiths here. <laughs> watch watch Wiles, no one even sees the cut coming from Tompkinson and we saw him explode in the final game of the season for Barry and Tompkinson picking up where he left off. Not normally the offensive guy, but I mean, since they've got this line back together, Garrett Billings was here as an assistant coach for a couple weeks and that looked like one of the sets that he was trying to implement and they've kept it going here. Yeah, I'll tell you, uh, that was a nice, nice finish by Zach Tompkinson, but what a pass yeah, by Caleb Wiles through three defenders threading it between the two on the far side and still right leading to the, the spot yeah yeah it's it's like Man. a quarterback throwing to a spot instead of to a player that was perfect now we have a, a loose ball push aj masson has lost his stick and he is such a calm player he just waits with the ball in the in this in his stick just waits for the player to get up and then picks it up but he then throws the pass away it flattens loop tuck though to try and get it back the ball's going to roll to shane scott he's got modsley with him they're two on two he's driving to the net spanger repels him and then giltonen flattens him giltonen was hustling back on the play and that will be the end of the first quarter Five to one, a great period for the Barry Blizzard as they go up by four goals on the Southwest Cyclops. Barry wants the championship to be back here Sunday. Southwest will try to come back and get to play the championship Saturday night at the Iroquois Cross Arena against this weekend Demons. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with the second quarter right after this. College has identified the gap between education and the stressors of the working world. We develop customized programs for each student at an affordable cost. Students can choose from over 30 diploma and certificate programs offered at any of Academy of Learning College's 17 Ontario-based locations. Simply a better way to learn. Learn more at academyoflearning.com. Fire Monitoring of Canada is the leader in the fire alarm monitoring industry specializing in the early notification of fire alarm signals to the fire department. Our experienced customer service staff will work closely with you to develop the best solution for your specific monitoring needs and our CFAA certified technicians are qualified to perform your installation quickly and efficiently. Be sure to choose Fire Monitoring of Canada because saving time saves lives. Visit us at fire-monitoring.com. Welcome back. We have a pretty big development here in the SELAC semifinal as Grant Crawley has come out between the pipes, replacing Jay Priest. Priest had an outstanding year, probably his best year in this league. A tough first quarter, though, and Crawley has come out to replace him. If not for the play of Angus Dinley, he's the top goaltender in the year, I think, yeah. Jay Priest, but not the starter at the start of the year. It was Grant Crawley getting injured in, I think, the debut in Paris, our first game. Southwest out there, he went down with a leg or knee injury, so Crawley comes back, but uh, you said a surprising development. We saw all four goaltenders in last week's yeah. semifinal. Yeah. So uh, playoff time, anything can happen, and this is the transition period. We've seen Dinley get active with the stick uh, a couple times already, and I expect him to make that long bomb pass. Watch the front doors in this quarter. They love that breakout pass from Dinley. He can rip it on a line. Southwest comes up with the ball. But Rustbridge runs into trouble, but nicely ditches it off to Petrie. The captain will give it to Critch, who fires one, hits Dinley, and then hits the post. Comes back out, and Brady Hesseltine gets him a fresh 30. Coger will follow him around the back and lay the lumber on. Ross Smith backs off, and Hesseltine gets a shot. Gillen flattens Hesseltine. Bit of a cross check in the lower back. Oh, they try and hit Critch cutting across as McGregor looked to 
connect with him. Didn't quite work out. And Gillen goes sidearm all the way up the floor. Levick is going to give it off to Teeter. Watch out. Gilton <laughs> runs him over. Oh. And Teeter, that could have been worse, but he saw it just at the last second. Teeter grabbed him as the ball was loose, so it's going to be Southwest possession, but Gilton had that one lined up. Gilton's been on fire tonight. He has been playing very well. He's one of the rookies in this league, and he's been a very good one. Not surprising. Played some really good ball with the KW Kodiaks and MSL. He is a fine young defender. Here comes Childerhose across the shot from the outside by Hesseltine. That one's stopped by Dunley. Again, he looks up the floor. Hesseltine flattens Griffiths, who takes a look at him. There's a lot of stuff off the ball as Griffiths just about stepped into Spanger, but had, saw there was an official three steps away and pulled off. But I'll tell you, oh, and there's a slash to the hand of Wiles. Wiles takes his hand off the stick and rips one at Crawley, and he hit him in the chest. I think he was aiming a bit higher, and now we're going to have a penalty. It's Hesseltine going for Southwest, and I think uh, Blair Ferguson may have realized he missed oh. the early one. No, look at his chin strap. He's calling the oh, chin yeah. strap. Oh, He's yeah, calling dangling. him to get off. The mouth of Ferguson, he's calling him to do the chin strap right. up, and he's trying to do it as opposed to getting off. So, Yeah, good point. An error in judgment by Brady Hesseltine as he just gets, he's right in the play. He's basically trying to block a shot while he's doing up the strap. Illegal equipment, and Barry goes to the man advantage. Not a smart penalty to take here. Shane Scott rips it. It's going to go oh. over and back, though, as Wiles leapt to try and stop it. But there was a lot of juice on that one. Trying the wicket keeper dive from the Cricket World <laughs> Cup this week. I did not see that. I've heard a lot about it. Didn't, Sounds like it was didn't a pretty miss exciting. much if you're no. from New Zealand. No. 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 The Aussies just ruled it. They did. Shepley takes the ball off the floor. Keen cuts. There he gets the pass. Barry just lets him run around out there. Again, same play. In. Oh, Scott recognized it this time and just yeah. took a slide step to his right. Last time he went straight back. Critch gets it. They've got six to shoot. He's in front. He's going to try it with one hand. And oh. scores! <laughs> Jordan Critch. The other hand was tied up. He's holding the stick by the end with one hand and somehow bounces it through Angus Dinley. That's how you beat Angus Dinley. You just do drop a hand off the yeah, stick. Yeah, just one-handed. No problem. And this yeah. comes like players all over top of him. Here comes Tompkinson comes in a bit weak there. And I expected him to come in with a bit more force. That was his role last season was kind of the grinder and the, the hard hitter guy. So he arrives late on scene, but I thought a great job and recognition by Shane Scott previously is he was beat by yeah. Keane on the same play. This time, instead of going straight back, went kind of back and a little to his right. Yeah. And Critch, with one hand, actually threw a pretty nasty fake, which, which is very impressive. That man can handle a ball. If you watch the Canadian University field lacrosse I was going to say, that comes from his field game. Did. That's right. He knows what to do. There's an overhead shot, trickles Whoa. through Crowley. <laughs> But rolls just wide of the net. Crawley didn't know where it was. He picks it up and makes the outlet pass. He had to hustle because he was running out of his four seconds. Levick will get the ball, and Barry has possession. Caleb Wiles with it. They're still on the power play, remember, as that's another shorthanded goal. Both the Southwest goals have come while they're a man down. Wiles backing in, spins. Gilton and pushes him. The pass doesn't connect, and the pass from Crawley... Crawley is stopping the ball, but he's having trouble connecting with anyone as he throws it. Critch is open. They pass instead to Petrie, who just about got that one past Dinelli. And now Petrie runs over Maudsley, who's not happy. He has a look at, at him while the ball's coming back around the other way with Critch. Oh, and there's a hard cross check to yeah, the back. Petrie's that one's not going to like that. Oh, and another one. Only one's being called. Okay, he dove that time. Yeah. I think the officials Caravello, realizing yeah. it. So Petrie's trying to draw another one. It's Caravello, the third one. Pete Caravello barely touched him, and Petrie's on the floor. But the first one was legit. Here comes Hesseltine. He shoots. It goes over to they Burton, who gets a shot off, and that's going to roll all the way back down the floor. And Southwest can set up with a fresh 30 and six attackers. Petrie's come one. off because he is sore. The initial shot hit Giltonen in the back as well. He goes off. A little worse for wear, too. They move it down. Loop Tuck gives it up to Hesseltine. Here's a jump shot by Keane, turned aside by Dinelli, but it goes straight over to Hesseltine. Maudsley buries him just after the pass. There's a shot on the crease. Finally, Barry comes up with it. Dinelli had to be alert on that one by McGregor. 
That was a long time, six on five, but Southwest even looking a little disjointed. This is what happens, I think, when you don't play a lot, yeah. is you, you can practice as much as you want, but in actual real game action, keep your eye in front of Dinely though. We got all this. And Petrie switching to number 16. That's not an extra jersey. That's Mike Burks that they've took the nameplate yeah. off. So we'll see if there's extra goals in That's that That's why he's got the C on there, of course, because yeah. Burke was the captain until he went up to the Colorado well, Mammoth. Pe Petrie had the A, so. Yeah, oh, I no, guess, no, I, I guess it's is a natural. The captain. Yeah. Yeah. It just worked out that way. That's uh, that's a lucky little bit of happenstance. And there's a there's holding a penalty, hold. no question. Dan Keene is corralled by Koger, and they get another set with the extra attacker. Nope, it's going to be a shot by Hesseltine, and they had a lot of time there, I think. I don't, I'm not a big fan of the jump shot. I'm really not a big fan of the jump shot when you've got 17 seconds on the shot clock and your goalie sprinting to the crease for the extra attacker. Yeah, if Crawley- And you're 40 feet away from the goal. If Crawley wasn't going there, I think I, I, I'm not that upset about it because you're going two men up. Yeah. So you want to get as much time as you can. But like you said, with Crawley coming, you, you wait a little bit. Nice job by Gilton to use the official as a pick though. Here's a shot, hard one from outside. Keen misses though, and Dinelli's gonna pick it up, take his time before he possesses the ball. He throws a one-two hopper up to Scott, but it's not even close to him. It skips away and Southwest has it. That's the downside of trying that long pass, is Southwest gets a possession. They still got 107 on the five on three. Gilton is the high safety valve. Critch has it. Nice little pass, but somehow Crawford got a stick on it. It's still connected with Hessel time, but Dinelli makes the save. Fans are loving this penalty kill so far. It's picked off by Gilton, and he's turning it up the other way. Four on one. Crawford has no <laughs> chance. Oh, Crawford slows them down, and they'll just set it up. That is outstanding awareness by Jason Crawford. He's used his speed for offense and defense tonight. Gilton could have taken the shot right on top of Dinelli, but decides to give it to the offense. Oh, Good call man. as Jordan Critch has both hands on the stick that time and rips it home. It's five to three. Southwest will still be on the power play. Southwest five corners here in this period. As we watch Critch do it now after, uh, wasn't it Critch the last time too? Critch bounced the one. The, uh, the earlier shot, Keen was the one who scored on the, uh, the first goal earlier, yeah. but uh, this is just, this is just a beautiful shot by Jordan Critch, setting himself up and uh, and firing for the corner. The earlier one was the the earlier one was the field play. This is all box as he has to go to the on the small net and finds the corner just over the shoulder of Dinelli. Oh, the delay here is they get the, uh, the penalty off the board. It won't go. That's weird. Now we have the draw. Childerhose and Gillen working hard. Childerhose trying to push Gillen away with the, with his hand. They're still battling for it. This is a long faceoff. The ball's out now. Madison tried to cover it. Now he's trying to scoop it up, but it's Spanger that will get it. Started to head up the floor, spins back. Hesseltine. Leaves it for Critch. They're setting up on the power play. 23 seconds to go. They've got 18 to shoot. Comes up top to Critch. A lot will flow through Critch at the top. Now he's going to switch positions. Keen loses his footing. Throws the pass up and over. Oh, Boxley was almost gone. Tries to pull it up to himself, but the Cy Cyclops get it. Shot clock expires just as Critch is letting it fly. The ball's loose and Spencer James just shovels it ahead. <laughs> Smart play by James. Almost sprung Modsley as we go back to five on five lacrosse. Modsley taking a hard check there. You see a lot of the hockey style finishing your check just after the ball has been passed. Maybe a little more than you'd normally notice in a lacrosse game. Even guys getting run into the boards. This is an intense battle. And Southwest has worked their way back in. Teeter tries to get the lead back up, but he is hit as he's going. Now he's got words with Giltonen, and Giltonen throws a little butt end at, at Teeter as he heads to the bench. Man, this is getting nasty. Teeter's been right in the thick of it. Yeah, like you <laughs> said, that's normally Wiles' game. I think they've been trying to corral that in him, but Teeter's picked up where <laughs> Wiles left off. Almost scooped up by Ross Smith, but instead Southwest will get it back. Oh, nice hands by Burton. Oh, oh. absolutely <laughs> running into a brick wall of Jeff Griffiths. 
was Southwest. And here comes Ross Smith the other way. Critz playing defense. That pass is nowhere near the cutting Brad Levick. John Ray realized and got back in position here. This is me. Oh, oh, the big hit, the big shot, the big goal. That is called taking a hit to make the play. It's a beauty by Eric Petrie. He is flattened, but he gets the pass across. Heads up, he knows it's coming from Ray, but he makes the pass anyway. And it is tucked home. Nine, 16. By DJ Nadelko, who is a defender. We got to look him up because I don't know if he's watch, ever scored. Watch Petrie on here on this uh, second look that we're getting as Nadelko scores. The guy who's most excited is Petrie after standing up John Ray. Oh, yeah. And that's what you want from your captain. He's wearing the C, and he is the captain. And, I mean, he got fired up and looked straight to the bench. Here they come again. Going to try and tie it up. Oh, saved by Dinelli. James loses it but buries his man. And DJ Nadelko did have one goal. James gives a shove to the man who's lost his helmet. That's, um, sorry, Miller Rusbridge, of course. Rusbridge just backs off, and Jane's the only one going to the penalty box. It looks like. We're gonna have the officials time out, but it looks like just James. So Cy the Cyclops have pulled within a goal at 5-4, and they'll be on the man advantage when we come back. For more CELAC semifinal action, I'm Steven Stamp with Matthew Carrick. Make sure you stay with us. We're gonna take a look right here at the first game that these teams played. An opener for both of them in the season, and Southwest just ran off to a big lead. Barry tried to crawl back into it. It was just, it was just too late at that point. But uh, Brad Levick was injured, in early, injured yeah. earlier in the season. You can see what he did in that game, uh, the five-point game along with Mike Bodsley, but it was really the six from Dan Keene on the other side that got things going. And uh, Brad Levick making his return to the lineup tonight after that injury. And the second time, a much closer affair uh, out in Southwest. Paris. Yeah, and that's where uh, both goalies played extremely well. Some spectacular saves by both of them. You can see a fair number of shots, but both goalies were solid. Um, a lot of the shots were not high quality scoring opportunities, but you know, both defenses playing well. That was before Barry got Caleb Wiles back. So they have changed a lot since then. We see Spencer James, the captain of Barry, sitting in the box. He is uh, a defensive stalwart and one of their key penalty killers. So Johnny Ray is having some words with Brady Hesseltine, or sorry, Kyle Childerhose, before the play starts. There is constant chirping going on between these teams. Critch passes it back, the shot by Keen. Looks like he was behind Dinelli, spins out, and Southwest gets it back again. They almost had things evened up. Looked like that may have caught him high too. He was uncomfortable as he went back. Nice save by Dinelli as McGregor on top of him. They're saying it's Barry Ball. Blair Ferguson saying it bounced off the turf and then up into the mesh. I'm not sure how it would have oh, gone boy. back that way if it didn't hit Dinelli. But it is Southwest, or Barry possession. They'll try and kill some time. Shane Scott slowing it down. He's got Loop Chuck all over him. Here comes Keen to help. They've got him trapped. He's fighting his way out. Nice job by Scott, but then he trips, gets the ball back. Solid effort by Scott, and they are working him over. You gotta be careful not to take a penalty to even it up if you are Southwest right now. And Scott comes out again with the ball. What never goes to the net. It's just too late oh. to shoot. He gets hit. Just as he's releasing that shot at the buzzer, I think that's Eric Gilton. No, it's Brady Hesseltine actually that ran into him. <laughs> Excelsior major Woo. teammates. Yeah, and no kidding. What a job by Shane Scott, killing that entire shot clock. He kept turning to his left, though. I think if he went to his right, he may have had the, the Dan Keen lane. Yeah. That's hard to know, though, when you're getting worked over like oh. that. You just you see a bit of daylight no, and you go to it. That's not on your mind, I, no. I guarantee you. There's a hard sub shot or sidearm shot by Blair Goss all the way down the floor, and it will be an over and back. Barry can kill 30 of the 37 seconds remaining. Give it to on Scott. Penalty. Yeah, no kidding, eh? He might be a little <laughs> tired, though, but he does. No Modsley starts with the ball. The other red shoe guy. He's being worked over by Burton who knocks the ball free, can't come up with it as it is A.J. Masson gets it. He'll go for a trot, followed by Critch and Burton. Burton runs him into the boards, it pops out, Masson gets it back. Flicks it behind him. What a play. I think he may have shot, thought the shot clock was a bit lower than it was. Oh no, he oh. was right on the restraining line. That was a great play by Masson, he was about to go over and back. 
and heads up by Wiles to get under it. I thought Caravello might have been the guy. He's another great ragman for this team, but a couple good uh, offensive rag shifts to get Spencer Jeans back on the floor. Penalty is over. Southwest still has the ball. They shoot, almost get it. Hesseltine, James rubs him aside, and there's the outlet pass to Crawford. Gilton is in between him and the net, but Crawford puts his shoulder down. Can't get a shot off. Great play oh. by Gilton, and, and Crawford runs into the crease. Those are, those are two speedsters. That was mono a mono there. The guys with wheels. Crawford has shown it a lot more in this game so far, but. Oh, Gilton can go, no, yeah. uh, no question. He showed it there. Keen takes the pass. The Cyclops still just one goal down. They've got the last three goals after Barry had scored five straight. There's no quitting them. There's a shot to save by Donnelly. Masson can't scoop it up, so it comes back out to Southwest. They have a fresh 30. Hard shot from the outside. Hesseltine hits the shoulder cap of Dinelli. Keen picks it up. He gets whacked by Dinelli's stick, and Jane's just pushing him into the boards. He comes back out. He's wrapped up by Wiles, and that's a, or by John Ray. Shot from the outside, smothered by Dinelli. Ray doesn't like the call, but I don't think there's much of a question there. Yeah, the arm was definitely up in the in the uh, face mask area there, and when three officials put their arms up, I think you're, uh, <laughs> there's not much argument. John Ray doesn't like the call, and I think the reason he didn't was that <laughs> defensive set, as we see, yeah. Well, he let go, he had the arm draped over the shoulder. Keen definitely threw his head up to draw attention to it, which I think is why the call was made, because if he had, I think Ray was trying to extricate his arm, but you know what, you get caught with your arm wrapped around a guy's neck, and you're letting yourself be called, whether you really were holding them or not. So all this does, I think, is is tires out guys like Shane Scott and AJ Mass and the, the rag out guys as they just got off that rough shift a couple minutes ago. Well, and defensive guys as well. That shot nicely blocked. AJ Mass and hustles back, gets in the way of Dan Keene's shot. The shot clock will expire as Crawley throws it up the floor. And a bit of a conversation between Koger and Masson on their positioning there. I think that may have hit off the helmet of Koger. And the referees are adamant that Barry start with the ball up near mid floor. How dare you start in the corner <laughs> and cost yourself 100 feet. So Monsley will comply, but he's not gonna hurry up there. There's no point rushing. Now he drives to the net. Oh, he drops the ball and then gets hit by Gilton. And, and because the ball had popped out, that's an illegal check. And uh, Gilton ends up giving them a possession when he was making it actually a pretty good play. There's Modsley trying to rag it. It bounces out. They've got two on O. Lobbed ahead. Gilton and can't get it. Now he does. He's going to be wide open. Shoot saved by the shoulder oh. of Angus Donnelly. And Donnelly was going down. That pass is picked up. Teeter scoops it off and heads up the floor. He's being caught. Too many men being called now. Illegal substitution against Southwest as they hustled out to try and play defense when the ball was turned over. And that will negate the final 101 of the Barry man, man advantage. We'll play you four on four. Is, Meanwhile, uh, Gillen having some words with Blair Goss. Goss is talking to Blair Ferguson now. It's Blair a Blair. <laughs> Gilton and between come. them, they have almost a full uh, head of hair. Uh, <laughs> nice. Blair Goss makes the decision to shave his down. A.J. Masson will start at the top of the ball. It is four on four, as we said, for minute one. And then, barring for the penalties, Barry will get a power play. Caravello tosses over to the far side. Wild will create a pick from Masson. Over to Caravello. He'll shoot, scores! Oh, wow. Nice little pick by Tompkins. Opens some space. And Caravello uses the screen to bury it just inside the post. Yeah, it was Tompkinson sliding over. This is more 22, 14, We 12. expect his role to be on this offensive, on the offensive line. Well, you'll get a good look at it here on Goss. You see both of them just duck out of the way. I don't think Crawley saw it, but we'll try and see another look here. Watch the shot from Caravello as he's going to change direction right there in mid-flight. You can just see it as he comes over the shoulder. It looks like it's coming straight over the top and he adds a bit of a twist on it just to put English on the ball. Just hooked it back to the near side. You know, that's a, a great lesson for young lacrosse players. Here's the fight off the faceoff. Ross Smith going hard for it. He's run over while the ball's still loose. 
so they'll get possession very well. A great lesson for young lacrosse players. You don't have to flatten guys on picks. Be in the right position as uh, Tompkinson just kind of backed into that pick. Here comes Brad Levick down the floor. Ross Smith and Luke Chuck exchanging words on the bench here. That, there's plenty of that can happen in this arena. There's a low shot stopped by Crawley. He's been fairly solid since he came in. Makes the short pass. There's a little flip ahead. And DJ Nadelka will run down the floor. He's a guy who had a great Begataway Cup for Guelph. Gives it off to McGregor. DJ Nadelka, the last pick in the Sealax draft. There's a shot and a save by Donnelly. It bounces out. Southwest will get it back. Nice to see that the last guy selected. And he earns a spot on the roster. And here he is dressing for the Creators' Cup semifinals. Barry is up a man now, so Southwest tries to kill some time, but they almost get a third shorthanded goal as Hesseltine goes to the net, and there goes that chin strap again. Just tape your helmet on. Here comes Barry the other way, Caravello, the bounce through a bunch of red shirts, and they'll set up on the power play. Wiles takes it from Teeter. Neil Roberts just saved Barry a uh, penalty there as he put a chokehold on Rob Coger, who was itching to get out on the floor. When they already had their five guys out. Well, There's I think they Wiles. had the wrong guy, but uh, a bit slow to the bench. Oh, was what a pass, what a goal! Wow, AJ Massey. Just a great play Sorry, by Caravello. Justin Caravello, the righty, as he takes that pass in flight. Or in, in 22, 14, six. And again, Caleb Wiles showing if you play him to, to shoot, if you come and take the shot away, he can find the other man. Oh, that's a lovely pass again. We talked about his shooting. He's made the two best passes of this game. And often the, the top shooters are the best passers as they find the ways to get the ball through where they want, get it through the crowd. Here it comes. A little fake. You can see him passing through two sticks. And then Caravello, nice job to tiptoe around as we come, come back here. Griffiths is tied up with somebody on the far side. Beautiful vision by Caleb Wiles to see the Caravello's cutting. Here's another cutter. That one's stopping Crawley. Oh, it comes right back out. Johnny Ray to Gillen. Sorry, it's Ross Smith. Spark plug on this team as he drag it, dragged it out of the crease. You can't shovel it in, you can drag it out through his legs. That keeps the possession alive. We're in the final minute here. Teeter gets it out, driving down Lowe's Monsley. He's picked up. A little late shove, but he gets it across. Caravello to Teeter, who goes short, slow, fires it. Oh, Teeter loves that low shot, and he tucks it just inside the far post. Barry has countered Southwest's three goals with three straight of their own. Six or 26. We talked about their last, their previous meetings. It was the quick start that was the undoing for the other side, and this time it's Barry getting off to the quick start, and they're still up by four. As watch this shot coming up from Teeter. This is his play, and the pick comes up high. You can see Crawley turn and look at his defender there. Uh, Teeter just tucks it around the leg of the defender hustling out. I think it was Rustbridge coming out. That's just a great shot. All coaches have their timeouts ready to call as soon as they pick up. And you can see Mike Gillen throwing the timeout sign up, and Petrie is, is furious because he doesn't think Barry had possession. He thinks that Gillen just fooled the referees into giving them a timeout and possession of the ball. I thought Gillen dragged it out, and then as he was calling time, the ball got, got popped out. So I think that's a good timeout awarded by uh, to Barry here. And Dyer and Petrie begs to differ. Yeah. But, you know, that's what's going to happen. It is an intense matchup. And uh, Southwest, you know, they fall behind 5-1. to one. Three straight goals, two by Critch, one the one-hander, one the rip from outside. Nadelko on the breakaway. And, uh, you know, they pull back within 5-4. Then Caravello with a couple of very nice goals. And then uh, the uh, the shot by Michael Teeter from the outside. And that makes it 8-4 with just 11.68 seconds left. But that is plenty for the uh, bl for the Blizzard to do something with this. And they'll do it with the extra attacker as Donnelly comes to the bench. But right now they've only got five out there. Stay tuned at halftime. We'll bring Ron Ruff on board to have a chat with you about what's been going on in this game, what to expect in the second half. I can, I'll give you a hint, a lot of intensity. <laughs> it's gonna stay fiery. They wait, only four oh. seconds left. They waited too long, but the shot by Wiles almost worked out anyway. 
Yeah, Shane Scott, they were get, trying to get him to, to hurry up. That timeout called with 11 seconds. And he thought, you know, he was looking at the 30, which was running down, should have been off as they'll wait probably for seven seconds there, but they started that play way late with about four or five, and we end with a four goal lead for Barry. Petrie and Gilton are having some words with the Blizzard players as they head off to the bench. Looks like they will get everybody cleared. We'll have some halftime interest for you, but we will take a quick break and be back with Canadian Lacrosse League semifinal action. play like a pro with Junior Seelocks. Want to play winter box lacrosse in the same great venues as the pros? Well, here's your chance. Seelocks operates a winter box lacrosse league for kids. Divisions range from U9 to the Prospect Division, or U18. Teams are located in Barrie, Oshawa, Niagara, Six Nations, and Paris, with games being played on the same days as the pros. Be sure you get yourself registered today, as the season starts January 2015. For more information, please visit CanadianLacrosse.com and come play like a pro. St. Williams Nursery is Ontario's largest native plant nursery and is committed to biodiversity conservation. We offer a large selection of high quality trees, shrubs, grasses, wildflower and seed, all which are grown from a source identified wild collected seed. Visit us on May 2nd and 3rd at our annual spring public sale. Choose from a beautiful selection of species, all at special wholesale pricing. Visit us at stwilliamsnursery.com for details. Back inside the Barry Molson Center, Matthew Carrick upstairs joined by Ron Ruff. Now we've got the Barry Tumbling Academy down there for our halftime entertainment. And it's a four goal lead for the Barry Blizzard in their first ever home playoff game here in the Canadian Lacrosse League. And Ron, you've been helping us out on some of our webcasts. Thank you so much yeah. for joining us again. Uh, you noticed a couple things aside from the sideshow that we had at the beginning. Uh, we actually got to play some lacrosse. Well, it was some great lacrosse that we saw, and we're giving Steve a rest. It was end-to-end -end action there. And it was just so exciting there. And I thought, Barry's, on Barry's first goal, I don't know if you're going to get a chance to roll in here. See too often where here's Mike Teeter in the corner trying to get out. They're shorthanded, so they got to get it over in 10. Oh, we got to roll it right back here. This is at the end of the play where he's going to beat him one-on-one, -on -one, I think. But it, what I wanted to comment was that Teeter actually passed it back to Dinely, and Dinely made the long throw over half, and you don't see that that often. There's the end result. What a, it, that was a gorgeous goal, but I'm more excited about the play in the corner. There it is, right back here with Teeter. See, he's trapped in the corner, and he bails out by going to his goalie, and there's Dinely just 
a bullet up the floor. And, that, and this is what started the goal off. And that was just a little thing that you don't expect the goalie to step out of the crease. But this is how smart Dinely is. He's not just stopping the ball. He's quarterbacking the defense as well. And that's just an awesome part of Barry's weapons. We'll see that a lot on their penalty kill, especially if they're, or if they're trapped in the 10. The reason for, you know, Dinely would normally put a bit more finesse on that, but he rifles that pass down because they were way late in the 10 count. Oh, they were running out. Teeter was cornered, like you said. There's no chance. You know, you're, you're almost thinking it was going to be a turnover and it was going to be like a three-on-one with Teeter being back. And that's not the guy you want playing defense for you. And instead, yeah. you get an offensive opportunity and you tie up the game. And that switched the momentum. One of the best guys we've ever seen do that is Joel Weber uh, with the Durham Turf Dogs. He's been out for a couple years of this league now, but Angus Dinley has definitely taken over the best passing role. But uh, you, you looked at the passing the other way. We'll get to that in a sec. This is how the two teams matched up coming in. Obviously, the five-win five goal win, five win streak, rather, five-game win streak. There we go. For the Barry Blizzard, uh, this is the 500 Southwest Cyclops team. An interesting play at the end of their yeah. season with the Durham Turf Dogs. They had to beat the tiebreaker by two, and uh, Southwest goes to pull their goaltender with leading Durham, or Durham leading by one, rather, going for the win as opposed to going for the second overall seed. You liked that play, Ron. I did. I, I, I go for broke. You go to win the game. That, that's what you're out here. Earlier in the season, Barry had a chance to pull their goalie when they had the tiebreaker with Durham. They elected to go a little more conservative. It worked out for them, too. So maybe that's why we're up here and the coaches are down there coaching <laughs> here. Well, I was more in favor of the, the other. Here's uh, you know, former goaltender Rob Blaisdell getting in the face of Jeremy Talevi. What what Blazer said he was upset about, he's trying to go to his bench, with his, which is on the left side of your screen, and this is where the players and the training staff got in the way that he couldn't get out. Jay Priest comes in after, and uh, what, what do you think, Ron? Playoff lacrosse, or is there more to this? Well, well last week we saw in Oshwegan we get off a fast start with Chris Atwood scoring with eight seconds into the game. I thought, what are you going to do to stop that? And <laughs> that, this was even a faster start. Even before the game started, they were at each other, and... So once again, the Barry fans got to see something special out there. And this happened. Not a lot of them got to side. This <laughs> happened just after the gates opened. So uh, notice the fans out there. Get there early. Not only do you get a rally towel, you get the fireworks before. And as we said before, this one went on for quite a while. And it was about two or three separate exchanges as uh, that was this meeting. Here's what happened the last time they met. And, you, and uh, penalty minutes are on the screen. 24 for Southwest and just 14 for Barry. Yeah, and yet Southwest would, came out on top 13-11 there. That first game, it, it was a reverse of what this game was. It was Southwest that got off to the quick start, and I believe they had a 6-2 lead after the first quarter made it 7-2. Barry tried to get back into it, and then Southwest again went on another four-goal four run. And the penalty minutes start to kick up a little bit in their second meeting. 28 minutes for Barry, 26 for Southwest, but still, a 500 say, uh, power play percentage. The exact same power play percentage for the visiting and home teams, though. Yeah, but the only difference was Barry's power plays came in the fourth quarter when they were down, and that turned the game around. He scored four goals in the fourth quarter. Three of them were on the power play, and that was the difference in that game. And that was part of that big run that they got on. Uh, we talked about the goaltenders and the passing of the ball earlier with Angus Dinely. Jay Priest now uh, relegated to opening the door on the on the bench there you notice something in in the way that they passed the ball when grant crawley came in too well, ron well absolutely uh Pri jay, jay priest was throwing the ball he was throwing like angus dinley down the floor quick breaking scoring opportunities right off the bat with crawley it changes a little it's a short pass and they're setting up their offense more so that fast break game is out of the uh picture right now for southwest which if the score continues to be a bit of a spread look for maybe jay priest to get back into this game for an offensive reason not necessarily for the defensive reason well when he went to the bench i kind of looked and, and see to look to see and uh pretty much looked like that was a, a final decision yeah. there this is what's happened in uh 12 Seelax playoff games the games decided by three or more goals just three but including the 2013 final Two of them settled by two or more goals and playoff margins of victory. Seven, including three overtime victories, settled by one goal run. We got one heck of a second half coming, don't oh, we? Oh, definitely you do. And I know you and I called the game in Niagara, and we had a big, big lead by Niagara. Barry came back, and we said, don't go away that day, and we're going to say the same thing here. Don't go away. This game's far from over. No Creators' Cup has never been held outside of the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena on the Six Nations Reserve. Should Barry win today, they will host 
on Easter Sunday. That's their goal. Matthew Carrick, thank you very much. Ron Ruff for joining us. Steven Stamp will take over beside me when we come back for the second half.
and welcome back to the Barry Molson Center. I'm Stephen Stamp with Matthew Carrick. It is eight to four in favor of the Barry Blizzard. They are 30 minutes away from having, from playing host to the first Creators Cup championship not held at the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena. I'm Stephen Stamp with Matthew Carrick, as I mentioned, and uh, Jay Priest is out on the floor. Did he win the 50-50? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on. I assumed he was out getting in a fight at first because he was so fired up earlier, but. He's got a little Oh, he bag. won the Battle of the Beards. No. Oh, there you go. Jay Priest winning the Battle of the Beards. It was a uh, fan vote. There's Diamond Jim Lowe announcing it. Priest for Southwest and Spencer James for Barry. And I think some people might want to change their votes because he did trim it today. Well, that pitcher they had, man, that was a great pitcher. It was impressive. Both of those guys. It was impressive. Gillen and Childerhose fighting for the loose ball. It comes out and it's scooped up by Miller Rusbridge. He's surrounded. We got to create a playoff bracket for that next year. Oh, yeah. We got to work our way down, although those two would still be the finalists. There's Jordan Critch with the ball, taking it back. Not if Ben McCullough comes back. That's true. I don't think he's coming back, though. He's ensconced on the West Coast. Jordan Critch with the ball, still Coger trying to check him. Seven seconds left. We are five on five. Didn't see a whole lot of that late in the first half. Dinelli stops that one and comes up with the loose ball. Here they come. Make sure you go to the CLAX page and vote, or the JVI page, we'll have to check where it is, but follow the JVI Twitter feed, at JVI Video, and uh, you can vote for the league awards, who you should think think should win them. Take part, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. There's a pass across, there's a shot by Michael Teeter. We'll find out before the game, the championship game, which could be Saturday right now, looks like it's likely to be Sunday. And we'll find out who voted. We'll have some a chat about who we think they should be. There's a pass across to the middle. Spencer James flattens Rusbridge as he didn't catch the pass. But the ball was right at his stick, so no penalty called. You could have called checking from behind if you wanted. I think There's the ball was close enough, but if I guess if it's in the back, <laughs> doesn't, right in the middle doesn't, of the doesn't numbers. really make a difference. Pass comes across to Teeter. He jukes and jives, tries to hit the roll man, but Maudsley is picked up immediately. Accidentally on purpose there for Maudsley. Oh, what a save wow. by, I'm assuming that is Crawley still yep. in the net. Yes, it is. Shane Scott picked up that loose ball. Here comes Southwest back the other way. Spanger with the spin move on Griffiths. They're three on two. Spanger across to the middle. The shot by Shepley. That one goes high and wide. Bounces right back to Keene, though. Keene gets a pick, Griffiths, flicks it across. Griffiths penalty is coming. playing with a broken stick, and he's got a cross-checking penalty coming, but where it's bent, he's holding on to it. Now he's throwing it down. Yeah, okay. Before the so they don't gets... call both, and he is flattened. Yeah, now they call the second one. By Shepley. So they're both going. Shepley gets the interference call. Griffiths will take the cross-checking call. Not much question about it when you break your stick on a guy. And he's just throwing the stick over and saying, I need a new one ready when I come back. No, he's here to go get it. Yeah, he's got to take one to the box with him so he doesn't get an illegal equipment call when he comes out of the box. Well, he can play without a stick. He just can't play with a broken stick. That's true. But yeah, no, see, he's not taking a stick over. They've got to go get one for him. So this could get interesting when he comes out because he's a guy that you would look for for that long bomb outlet pass as the play expires, but we'll see if Barry remembers that he's in there without a stick. See they they, they actually want to send him one over. Rob Blaisdell, Derek Collins. Derek Collins has one, one of the assistant coaches, and Ross Smith is sprinting over to get it to him. And Shepley so far has not gone to the Southwest West Mountain box. They still got the door open, Gord Brown waiting for somebody to come and join him. Southwest doesn't want to send anybody. Kyle Childerhose walking over that way. It was Shepley that got the ball though, so question. Where did he go? Unless he's hurt. He's on the bench, and now he's heading oh, okay. over. I'm not sure why he didn't make his way over before. Now Zach Tompkinson is heading over with another stick for Jeff Griffiths. 
He'll bring back the other one. They must just, and here's yet another option. <laughs> Rob Blaze Dillis swing wood. Now they're gonna change it again. This will be the third stick that Jeff Griffiths has had. He's, you're gonna see Zach Tompkinson <laughs> come into the frame in just a second. And there, on, on, Griffiths on. gets the ball. Sheffley is there. Oh, I like the, uh, is, we go with door number two. He doesn't like any, he sends the ball back. No, just kidding. He is ready to go. He'll have a seat, the door closes. Starts four on four play. Jordan Critch will have the ball for Southwest. They're just holding up while the uh, technical officials get the penalties up on the, on the scoreboard. Eight to four lead for Barry. And uh, this slowdown, I'm not sure who it favors. Certainly momentum was with Barry scoring the last three goals of the first half, all in the last two minutes and 50 seconds. Yeah, but they Southwest, had momentum. Southwest wanted to get going as soon as those two penalties were called. And they, they got their players out, realized it wasn't their ball. So, I mean, everybody's kind of mixed up down there. I think, I think it favors Barry, but not for the reasons that you said. Yeah. <laughs> if that makes sense. Well, I think it, it, if anything, it was taking away the momentum Barry had. So I think, you know, Southwest is, is happy to get things started here though with the ball. There's a pass back, the quick shot, foot saved by Dinelly. I'll tell you, Angus Dinelly hasn't been tested a lot, but he's been good when he's had to be. Johnny Ray, watched by Keen, started to drive in towards the net, feels back out, and will take his time. There's the pass over to Coger. He wanted the ball. He's got Hesseltine on him and now some help coming from Luke Chuck. Koger had actually beat Hesseltine into that play and it was Hesseltine getting on his horse to make even the numbers. Barry still with the ball and six seconds to shoot. Teeter's got it. He'll let it fly from outside. The sidearm low shot scooped up by Crawley and he makes the short pass. That's the one thing here in the third quarter. So the second and third are the long change quarters at Sealax where we see a lot of, of transition play but Grant Crawley doesn't have quite that same passing that Dinelly and even Jay Priest do. Yeah, Ron Ruff touched on that in at halftime, and he, whether it's just the fact that Crawley hasn't been playing much or just not his game, but he definitely pointed that out, and I, I have to agree with him after watching how this one's developing. Shot by Rustbridge, well wide. Caravello gets and goes over to Tompkinson. He's gonna try and pass it across. It was low for, for Smith, who takes a shot after the pass. Tompkinson gets it back to him. Three. It's stripped away. Essentially Cameron Rowe over there. The ball almost picked up by Gillen, but it heads up defensive play. Knocks it away from oh. him. Caravello with it. He'll pass it over. Nice wide oh. pump play. And Wiles gets the shot off, but he misses. Oh no, they're gonna say it touched Crawley. So we'll have a fresh 30 and Barry gets the ball back. Gillen hey. was all the way down the floor being responsible defensively, but now Teeter will come out to join the offense. Dylan took off with the five on the shot clock. Very smart play. Crawley stops that one. Takes a look up the floor, but again yeah. makes the short pass. This one to Spade. He's gonna make the long pass to the man coming out of the box. Two on, oh, scores! Joel Shepley isn't unhappy about the penalty now because it led to him being sprung on that breakaway. He gets the first goal of the second half. It's eight to five, Barry. The side 91, 13, one. It's funny because we, we were so focused on Griffiths coming out of the box without a stick, and then he found four of them as uh, Shepley just comes in, and no time for Donnelly, I think, really to set up on that one, as it's just a low shot that fools him. Those don't don't often get in behind Donnelly. That's a perfect spot, though. We just found it. You can see Gillen and Childeros lining it up, both of them looking up at Mike Sullivan, and it pops out to Koger off the faceoff. We've seen a lot of scrambled draws. That one just flew it. Ball, oh, nice heads up play by Ross Smith. Somebody threw a pass to him as he was in the change area. He, oh, for a second, a fraction of a second, went to go for it, but went to the bench instead, realized it would have been too many men. Caravello circles and gives it off to Teeter. Teeter shoots, saved by Caravello, by Crawley, bounces straight to Gilton. And he takes a rough ride from Caravello, makes the pass ahead. They're two on one, the shot. Luke Chuck was right on top of the net, on top of the crease, but the shot instead. Some, uh, we have one visitor, a uh, Barry alum, who's in the building today, Colin Boucher, as that ball is pushed back over. So Southwest gets a great defensive play to get it, but Colin Boucher is here, recently released by, recently released by the Vancouver Stealth. There's Jordan Critch. And of course, with active rosters in, before the playoffs a couple weeks ago. But he's Go been ahead. picked up by Rochester already. 
and he's on their active roster. He is now going to be in the playoffs for sure, it would look like. Finally, with that stop, they're going to call a push by Monroe, and Southwest will get the ball. That's why I've been so impressed with Barry's defense this year. So many years, it's been all about Colin Boucher, and without him, guys like James and Coger have stepped up. Illegal pick. Barry gets the ball, and they head right up the floor, two on one. Ray with Levick, he's on the wrong side, but he still gets the pass and still scores. That is a shooter's cut. A couple of fakes and tucks it over the shoulder. Nice pass by Ray to realize that uh, Levick would be okay with the amount of space he had. As we said, Levick coming back, Ray. 7 11. Over to him and uh, pass going over. 7 from 11. Back to Levick Seven. again. I was focused on Jay Priest. He saved his team illegal substitution penalty as he closed the door on a guy coming towards the wrong door. Of course, the goaltender in this league, you got to change based on where your goaltender is situated. Jay Priest knows that rule, and head still in the game. You'd expect the goaltender when he gets pulled to sit there and kind of talk about it. He's been in the game talking to his players ever since he was taken out. Another long face-off battle that eventually does come out. Scooped up by Westbridge. And Smith is on him. But... Uh, Johnny Ray was, uh, Ken Colson came all over Johnny Ray, which is really the smart play because he's the guy on his right side. You force the guy on his offside, but might have been a little over aggressive by Colson as there was nobody near Levick. So a smart pass by Ray and it's nine to five, Barry gets that goal back. Critch has it with Coger all over him. Nice little shovel pass. He'll come back to him. The There's defender a stick without on the a floor. Stick. It's Jason Crawford, but the 30 second clock expires and it's Barry possession. Not a lot of scoring, just a couple goals here in the first half of this third quarter. Caravello goes up top to Tompkinson. He'll go in and try and stir something up in the middle of the floor as Teeter drives down the far side, tries to get across to Modsley, goes to Tompkinson, shoots just a little bit wide. Teeter gets it. It goes off of Crawley, so they get a fresh 30. Tompkinson is sandwiched and run into the boards. The ball pops out. He's trying to fight to get it back. He goes down. It's picked up by Southwest and fighting out of it. Nice effort there to come up the floor by Eric Petrie, the captain. And Petrie's a three running. on two. There he goes, the pass, the shot. Oh, what a Ooh. save by Donnelly. What a move by Childerhose. Was a nice little move. We saw some of that at the Kufla Championships, the Begataway Cup, as he had a couple of big games for uh, for Western. One in particular, he was just on fire. Of course, but Jeremy Talevi, the coach of the Western Mustangs, he likes his. He does. He likes, he likes his, his Mustangs. Mustangs, but he also likes his uh, his field players. A whole ton of them on this Southwest lineup. The officials pointing up to the clock. Try and get it set. What speed by Petrie! And he makes the pass. Here's the move. By, uh, oh, and it's off the post. It wasn't Dinley. It was the crossbar that stopped Childer Hose on that one. So he just needed that field net and he would have been all set. There's, they're gonna add 10 seconds to the clock as it ran down on that that stoppage. So it'll go to, should be 7.48. And there it goes. Which it does. It's like your magic. What can I say? Southwest starts off with possession. They trail by four, trying to get back into this. Next stoppage will be the official's timeout. So they want to score before that break. Kane can't accept that pass. It's picked up by Monroe. He tries to one-hand it over Ala Jordan Gritch, but instead Spanger comes up with it, bounces away from him. James takes the man instead of the ball, and it leads to a shot by Spanger. Southwest gets it back. Critch gets the ball, shoots, saved by Dinelly. Critch is flat. Here comes Dinelly with the short pass this time. Tompkinson bounces it. Caleb Wiles will set things up. Wiles going down low. He's got Keen on him. Ray's cutting. Nice job by Spanger to pick him up to take away a chance. But Teeter gets a shot off. That one bounces high and wide. Scott's going to try and stop the over and back, but he can't. He needs to just get in the way of those guys to not let him get the break, and now he does. Hesseltine will catch the ball, and we're going to take the official's time out. It's nine to five, just two goals here in the third quarter, Matt. And uh, the scoring has slowed down after we had bursts of it in each direction there in the first half. Yeah, well in the first quarter, a five goal run for Barry after the opening goal from Southwest. That gave a four goal lead to Barry. 
And then we batched three goal runs, and then we've gone back and forth here. So it'll be interesting to see how the rest of this quarter and the rest of the game plays out as will that opening fast start from Barry be the uh, the, difference be, be the result it. of yeah. the game again. I mean, we saw that in the opening game between these two, as we mentioned, which was a 13-11 final where Southwest got out to the early lead. Barry really with some struggles early on. And uh, Barry fought their way back in, but just couldn't. They got within one goal. And then Mike Burke had an empty net goal at the end of the game. There you see uh, the Southwest bench, Jeremy Talevi, the head coach, 4-4 four four this season, uh, a fourth place spot, but had them right in the thick of things. They won their first, four of their first kind of five games. They were four and one. Um, then Mike Burke was gone, and they really did struggle to replace his role in the offense. But they are certainly competitive down the stretch. Just, just seem to be looking a little something. Yeah, and uh, Brad MacArthur on the other side. I think the runaway choice for Coach of the Year yeah. uh, this season. And so when he took over, I think Barry may be closing in on 500 in their all-time Sealax record, but they've been on a tear since Brad MacArthur took over, I think two losses, including playoffs, and then two losses this season. So maybe four losses in total, overall yeah. in, a, in a season and a half. McGregor with the ball being watched by Gillen. He circles around behind, still has the ball, shovels it over. Keen's looking for somebody. He's gonna get it to Goss. It bounces away from him though. They've got 12 to shoot and McGregor's gonna try and drive. Nice double team by Gillen and James. Goss has to let it fly, he does. Dinelly stops it and bounces on the loose ball. There's a long pass up, right in the stick. He's pushed down from behind, penalty coming to McGregor. But Coger's gonna get to the ball ahead of Hesseltine, so Barry has a chance. They shoot, oh, what a save. By Grant Crawley, but it is gonna be a check from behind. Thought he was in all alone there. He was, I mean, he was racing in. Beautiful pass, and you're just gonna see, no question, it's a little two-hand shove. It's not a cross check, but it's just a shove from behind that throws the man off balance. I think it's a pretty good call. McGregor thinks he didn't cross check and didn't really do anything wrong, but he really doesn't like that call. As you can see, he smashes it, slams the door shut. I mean, a guy's on a break when you push him down. Yeah, you're gonna have to call that, but a shame too because McGregor comes off an incredible offensive shift kept it alive by hopping over he was way out of the play got back on his correct side and kept things going Wild shoots Crawley just pounces on the rebound before Modley can pick it up here comes Gilson and up the other way and South West will start killing this penalty Crawford hustling after him for the double team with Teeter Teeter cuts him off Modley is saying it's over and back and it was over him. oh five seconds to get into the offensive zone which he did not make in C you have 10 seconds to get past center, another five to get past the restraining line. And again, Jay Priest keeps his team alive, this time holding up Alex Lupchuk, who was trying to get out early. There's a pass, oh, a little bit high for Scott, but it's picked up by Caravello off the carom. That shot goes off the foot of Crawley and up into the stands. Bounces back out. This could be very possession. They've got a man of 13 left on the man advantage. Five and a half to go here in the third quarter. And they start up top with Wiles. Peter DeModgley gets it back. Caravello, oh, Garrett's Shane Scott took that shot off of a Southwest player. It's gonna be a fresh 30 and Barry gets it back. Wiles looks off his man, they go across, but it's stopped on the cross crease pass. Nice pickup and then the pass ahead to move the ball. Now let's see if they get it through into the front zone five seconds, they do. Rustbridge trying to spin off of Scott. Nadelko comes to help him out right on the line, so he just kind of drops. A nice play by, by Rustbridge, and Nadelko's there to bail him out. He's flattened. The ball comes loose and is picked up by Griffiths. Griffiths will move it up the floor. Plenty of time still in the power play for a full possession as Modsley walks up into the offensive zone. Modsley waiting for his offensive cohort to join him. Teeter takes it high, goes to Wiles. They're set now. Behind the back to Teeter, he's got room, fires it across. Levick tries to pass over, it's tip, but Wiles still gets it. They've got three, two to shoot, Wiles does. It's wide, the 30 second clock expires. Southwest gets it, we're back to five on five lacrosse. Right now. Oh, look out, oh, here we go pass. now. Oh, the ball comes out to Childerhose. He scores. 
had Dinely on his knees at his mercy and threw a whole bunch of fakes. They had to pay attention. Yeah, I was man coming out of the box. I wasn't paying attention. I was focused on the, the Southwest player that got into Barry's bench. And Southwest is saying that the, the guy who opened the door did it just as the hit came, but you can see that's the first time I'm seeing this Childerhost <laughs> with a number of moves. Pretty sweet. In front of Dinely, that was pretty good there. And Southwest bench got fired up and they had more words for the coaching staff of Barry. We've been calm all game and I said to a couple people downstairs, they wanted to know if I thought things were gonna get nasty. I said, depends how the game goes. And uh, if it starts to get one-sided one way or the other, we're gonna see that escalate one more time. Yeah, the fireworks could come out. Coker makes the pass across to Teeter. Keep an eye on the handshake line, see how that goes. That'll be interesting. Cam Monroe takes it back to Teeter. He Nine usually is with Southwest. Yeah. There's a pass to Caravello. He's gonna let it fly. Stick saved by Crawley. The rebound just bounces past Monroe, or he had a chance to tuck one home off the rebound. Caravello gets it back with a fresh 30 for Barry. He's watched by Petrie. Gets to Teeter on the far side. Rare offensive set for Barry without Caleb Wiles. They get it over to Gillen. Bounces away, but Monroe tries to get it back. He does get it off the boards. Rap check attempt misses and he gets the shot off. Now Crawley's going for the long pass and goes straight to Johnny Ray. Maybe that's why he hasn't been doing it. Barry brings it back up the floor. Monroe with the ball. Oh, and that's going to be an over and back despite Ray's effort. No, they They're call not it a tip. call it because it's a chance. Dinely comes up with it. It was tipped, they're going to say. And now a penalty oh, coming to Ray's. He gets a stick up into the face of Luke Chuck. Luke Chuck saying that, or Ray saying that Luke Chuck initiated it. No, he was saying, he he was saying that Luke Chuck was on the back of Dinely. Which that he was. One. Yeah. <laughs> kind of hanging I off think, the back of him. I think bit. maybe if Dinely goes down, he gets that call, but Dinely. Not gonna do that. <laughs> Not really the agent. And a risky play, because if you don't get the call, yeah. you can see he's got the ball here. Loop Chuck all over him. I don't think there's a penalty there. Yeah, I, I think, think he turns and there. gives up his back, but yeah. definitely one when the stick comes high. And Loop Chuck didn't. Ray got the call earlier, because he had the arm wrapped around the player, around the neck or down around the shoulder. Loop Chuck was just on top of the shoulder, and uh, I think it's a good non-call. But Ray takes the penalty, an undisciplined one, and uh, Southwest almost takes advantage right away. There's Childerhose back on the crease. And uh, I'd get it back to him the way he's been playing lately. Critch is going to go over to the far side to Keen, back to Critch. And it's going to be the shot by McGregor. Childerhose has it, gets away from him and into the stick of Dinel. And he'll just slow it down. Now he makes the outlet pass, goes to nobody except for Grant Crawley. Critch and Keen are stuck at three points apiece so far in this game, as are Mike Teeter and Caleb Wiles. McGregor with a long pass over to Keen. They'll slow it down. Southwest still on the power play trying to climb back within two goals. A Creators Cup berth is on the line and that shot won't get through for Childerhose. He's better on the crease throwing three or four fakes. There's a shot from Critch stopped by Donnelly, goes straight out to Hesseltine, bounces away from him, but he gets it off the boards. They try and set oh. up McGregor, just a little high for him on the far crease. It's knocked away. Here comes Masson, can't pick it up. It's under the feet of Claire Ferguson. That gives Keen a chance, but he loses his stick. There's the pass on this crease. Crawford oh. with a one-hand play. That one stopped by Crawley. Crawford's gonna sprint to the bench. What an effort, but no goal. And 40 seconds left on the power play for Southwest. Hesseltine with the hidden ball trick, but he gives it back to Keen. Goes back to Hesseltine. He has to one-hand it. They're setting up. 12 to shoot, and they score. Wow. How did Dan Keen find a hole in Angus Dinley from there? It didn't go through Dinley, it went around him. He banged it off the, the post to the left of Dinley. I heard the tick and off the post. And you guys practice this shot in warm up and in practice. Keep your eye on the post here. I don't know if we're going to see it. 77 14 1. You can slightly see it. You heard the slight tick as well. And my, my, my. Just as we say, Holy Dan Holy Keen Holy held Holy off the score sheet. Except for that opening goal, he scored shorthanded. Now he gets his second, his fourth point of the game. Just barely inside the restraining line. You can see it just skips past Dinely. And then they win the faceoff. And Southwest gets the ball back. We're back to five on five. And Mike Gillen just got run into. Took a shot in the hip, and he is a little stiff and sore. See if he tries to get even with somebody. 
Oh, yeah, he yep. laid the lumber on right he, away. He waited until the right guy showed up. Yeah, it was Shepley that did it, and he <laughs> loses his stick going after him, then dives. Now a couple of guys fighting for the ball. It's knocked away. Nice play by Smith, but then he knocks it away. It's knocked out of the stick of Tomkinson. He's saying it should be Barry Ball, but it did go off of him into the southwest bench, and then he gets a tap from a, a Cyclop, Cyclops player going to the bench. Turns and gives a shot to Brady Hesseltine as Hesseltine runs across the middle. We're gonna have an illegal substitution call on Southwest. They, they all have five out there. I yep. don't know if someone went through the wrong door though. See if maybe Mike Sullivan, the, the uh, third official, saw that one. Well, it was, an, it was called. And Brett McCauley talking. It was McCauley making the call, right? Yeah, it was called by Brett McCauley. I thought, oh, now they take it off the board. Yeah. Or did no, they? No, they're still pointing at it. Ken Colson goes to the penalty box, and we're going to have a Barry Blizzard power play. Yeah. It is an illegal substitution call. Man, Southwest with all the momentum, and again, they take a penalty at an inopportune time. Whether they agree with it or not, this one's not of the stupid variety. But uh, it's still going to hurt them here as Barry will get their chance to run the, uh, not quite run the shot clock. There's two seconds in between. But Hitting down towards the end of the third quarter. They take a shot. Crawley gets the ball, makes the short pass. Southwest will come up the floor. Sprinting up is Petrie, but he's run into by three Barry players. Watch he a is five count. And that's going to be Barry Ball. Here comes Wilds the other way. He's going to shoot this ball. Just misses the far side with four seconds to go. Whoa. He's flattened and then swings his stick down onto the heel or ankle of the Southwest player. Yeah, and an extra shot. Oh, nose to nose between Petrie and Caravello. This one's not done. There's still some bad blood between these teams, and that slash by Caleb Wiles isn't going to help alleviate it. As that was Eric Gilton, and he came down. And Gilton is the one who flattened him, and, and Wiles just spun him. I'm not sure if we got it on camera because it was going away from the play, but he just swung his stick right down onto the back of the leg of Gilton. And it is 9 7. The Creators' Cup birth, championship game birth is still on the line. And the right to host if you're Barry. That's right. Barry could have the game here again. Could you Southwest imagine this comes crowd? Back and wins it. This is a they crowd. They will host on Saturday. They will go to ILA Saturday night. But Barry would be here Sunday. Yeah, sorry. I was going to say, this is, like I've said all, all along since Barry showed up, they were out of the playoffs two years ago. They, Barry fans packed this place, and they were loud and ruckus. And uh, coming out in droves again tonight after they've all been at work, you imagine them Sunday after they're hopped up on sugar from the Easter Bunny? <laughs> a lot of these folks, I'm sure, would come back and bring some friends because this has been a tremendous lacrosse game. They love their blizzard here in Barrie, and it's uh, it's very cool. Well, it has been a while since uh, since pro lacrosse was here. The tornadoes back in the 70s and 80s, and then the Lake Shores were here. They went away. Uh, Barry Junior A's are starting to get back into things, but. Pro lacrosse, if you're a lacrosse fan in Barry, it's got to be all about the blizzard. And they are on the uh, on the cusp, I would say, of, of breaking through in the playoffs this year. Missed out on the Creators' Cup by one goal last season to Niagara, the eventual champions. But they've been in the driver's seat all year and uh, trying to do it again. Grant Crawley between the pipes for Southwest. He's going to need to be stellar this quarter because the Cyclops have to make up some ground. There's Angus Dinelli for the Barry Blizzard. It's going to be McCrory and Gillen once again at the faceoff circle. As we start the first, fourth quarter, I'm Stephen Stamp with Matthew Carrick bringing you the Canadian Lacrosse League semifinals. Winner to the Creators' Cup. The ball is on the floor. We're underway, underway with the final 15 minutes right now. And way early was Patrick McCrory. It's going to be Barry possession. He just took a swipe at that before the uh, before way before the whistle went. If you do that, you want the other guy to be trying as well. And, and Gillen was still stationary listening for the call. Wiles will give it over. They are on the power play. Barry is, so that's a big call. Wiles loses it, but gets it back. Goes over to Scott down low to Caravello. They're looking across crease, but Southwest is mucking up the middle. 
So you're gonna try and get some on the other side. There's the pass down low. Teeter goes up and over. Steps in the crease before the ball gets in and never did get it in the net. So it's Southwest possession with 58 to go on the penalty. They can kill quite a bit of it. After we talked about his passing skills in halftime, Grant Crawley three assists in that quarter. Nice. We take it all back, Grant. Southwest ragging the ball. He's pinned in along the boards. Giltman loses it. Eventually comes out to Dinley who makes the short pass. And Monroe will just move the ball up the floor. Caravello covered, so he goes to Scott and Caravello will trot down to his corner. They're still on the power play and Caleb Wiles has the ball. Wiles held scoreless so far in this game. He was the guy that put the team on the back in last year's semi. See if he lights it up here. Wiles with the shot from the outside. You mean no goals? Because he definitely has some assists on yeah, the beautiful so, pass. Yeah, sorry, three three assists so far, but he's held off the uh, the goal sheet. Right, he usually does put at least a couple in. And he can do it in spectacular fashion. They get the ball back, the penalty's over, but Barry still has possession. Hard work by Rusbridge all over Shane Scott, but Scott fights his way out of it. There's a pass through, can't connect to Wiles. Teeter tried to just get it through a couple of defenders. Couldn't quite connect. Caravello comes out and gives it back to Wiles. They've got 11 to shoot. And Maudsley with the ball, he's driving between two men, gives it up to Teeter. Teeter has to look down to get it, has time. Nadelko on him. There's a pass to Maudsley, that one's well high. Shot clock will expire, but Southwest has it. They're going up the floor. Loop Chuck being watched by Scott. Here comes Critch down the middle. But instead, the pass goes up high to McGregor. Now it goes to Critch. No he passes it to Shepley, who wasn't looking, or he would have had a wide open shot at net. Critch gets it back. He's going to drive himself this time. Stop by Dinley. Nobody up the floor, so Dinley's going to take his time, step out of the crease. Now just pass it off to Coger, who will run it up over center. 9 7. We've been kind of stuck here for a bit. Two and a half minutes into the fourth quarter with no scoring. There's a drive to the net. Levick steps in the crease. Southwest gets the ball. He missed anyway. A little bit of a hook with the stick from Shepley. Now he yeah, gets the Shep that, that Shepley ball. had some words for him as he gave a Crawley a bit of a bump on the way by. Shepley will pass it back out to Keene. That's the guy you want to be carrying it a lot. Now we're going to have two players heading off for some jousting. It's going to be Petrie and Griffiths, the alternate 16s. Both pretty sturdy players for their sides. 16 and 16. Petrie certainly oh, playing 16. more of a role on the offensive side. Petrie's been fired up tonight too. Oh yeah, he's a fired up kind of he, guy. Normally, one of the biggest hits in lacrosse I ever saw was delivered by Eric Petrie. He, uh, in overtime in a Toronto Beaches game, he just absolutely stood up, a member of the Brampton Excelsiors. Three points for Griffiths on the season, all assists. 15 for Eric Petrie. So in terms of offensive threat, certainly a bit of an edge to Barry in getting Petrie off the floor. He's also one of their best defenders, a nominee and for defender transition of the year. player. And transition player. And he just can't play goal. Well, maybe he can. He just hasn't yeah, done it yet. I wouldn't count him out. Keen with the ball, spins off. Shootingly just opened up as he sent it across to Critch. Uh, yeah. Chance opens and a huge pick. And that's going to result <laughs> in a ball turned over. A.J. Masson knocked to the ground. Barry gets possession. Zach Tomkinson will take the ball. Keen picks him up. Bounces it to Caravello. Teeter cutting to the net, but he's covered nicely there by Matt Spanger. So Caravello drives down. Wiles is going to shoot. Save. He, his stick goes flying. The stick of Gilton and actually. Gilton as he tried to block it, yeah. It's a lot of power on that shot by Wiles to knock the head stick right into the hands of Gilton. Burton's going to take the ball and head up into the offensive zone, something he doesn't do a whole lot. Travis Burton is 18 years old, played primarily junior B. Now Crawley's going to the bench for the sneaky six on five, or sneaky five on four. Hessel time with a shot, stop. They better get him back out there. It's two on one for Barry. There goes Crawley racing, but he's not going to get there before Jason Crawford. The hand is up in the air. They're going to call illegal substitution. It's got to be on Southwest. It's yeah. this probably just left the bench to sprint down. Yeah, there. he took off. Well, what happened was he took off while uh, 25, sure 20. the player was, maybe Shepley. 
Red, was trying to get to the, to the bench, and they were trying to direct which door. So he was in the change box. It called Red, took off. but here in Sealax, if you're bench buyer, illegal substitution, wiped out by the goal through the whole length of the floor. You actually have to come in through the doors, and uh, he was nowhere close. So the no, the too many men gets uh, gets wiped gets out. waved off anyway, so it's not going to really hurt. And we're still four on four. They could have actually called that an automatic goal if they want with the breakaway and the penalty coming. So. But uh, no, no need. They let uh, Crawford toss it in, and that strategy backfires on the Cyclops. That could be a big goal, making it 10 to seven, just extending the margin that they need to get. Here comes Gilton, though, running back on Smith. Smith stands him up. Gilton goes by, spins back, is going to give it to Keane. We're still four on four. 28 seconds left in the matching penalties. I'm supposed to be impartial. I don't normally cheer for guys to get goals. I want Gilton in to get one tonight. He deserves it. <laughs> he has worked very, very hard. Shot by Keane. That one goes off the foot of Dinelli. Bounces back out to Keane. They've got a fresh 30. We've got 10 seconds left on the matching penalties. Griffiths ready to jump out. So is Petrie. Looks like they'll both come back and enter the play. Griffiths opening his own door, so his is already open. We're scoring ground. The Mitchell is opening Petrie's. He has to wait. Griffiths is out first. Almost gets the ball, but a nice hustle play. Knock it away by Seth West. Masson gets it and runs over center. Cheekily tosses it back to Griffiths, who gives it back to Masson, and they'll set things up. Three goal lead, less than 10 minutes to play for Barry. The fans can taste the Creators' Cup coming to the Molson Center. There's a shot by Teeter. Oh. Stop by Crowley as it spins the stick in his hands. It got into the legs, but just couldn't squeak by. The stick was there, like you said. Here comes Southwest yeah. back the other you way. Goss takes a pass. Here, you know, like He's another D first guy who can really get up and, and really help out in the offensive zone. He's gonna head into really, trying to create some havoc as the like shot comes from the outside. Hesseltine misses. He'll go over and back, but it's not picked up, and it is Cameron Rowe coming down all alone. Scores! Cameron Rowe stretches the lead. And that's a big one very pleasant. Yeah, and you can see the line change here. A bit of heads hanging down. Look at the Nine. head hang down of Monroe just to get speed, trying to break away. And a couple transition goals now coming in for the Barry Blizzard. Look at the head go down. He gets that burst of speed off the center line. And now Barry, crowd starting to get back into it and you can feel the momentum starting to shift back their way. The lead back up to four. Dillon and Corey battling once again. Ball pops out. He's gonna go straight over to Lubchock, who runs down the floor. Pushed off by Smith, now picked up by Monson. So he's loose again and lofts it over to Keane. He wanted to shoot, but nice job by Gillen to get out on him. Critch to the far side, comes to Keane. He lets it go. Leg save or hand save by Dinley. Ball bounces out, three of those two players, and comes to Southwest. Dinelli's gonna sprint out. Actually drags that toe, so he's still in his crease and gets possession. Here comes the pass as Burton knocks a man down at mid-floor and then stands over Modley. Modley looks back, but there's a pass by Tompkinson to Caleb Wiles. He is, the play is called oh. up. The goal is he stepped in the crease, but it will be an interference call against Southwest. And I think it's Jordan Trench who's going. He's the guy that's arguing the loudest. Uh, Travis Burton's getting his fair share of arguing in. Here's the pass. And oh, it's Burton, sorry. Going. But yeah, Wiles steps in the crease. McCauley right there to make the call. I said Burton off a game earlier that uh, Burton's an 18 year old. Played some junior B, 15 games of junior A last year um, as a defender for the Brampton Excelsiors. What a future that kid's got ahead of him in the junior A league based on what he's shown us here as a rookie in Sealands. Now they're up by four and on the power play are the Barry Blizzard. Wiles passes over to Teeter. He goes down low. Caravella's back up to Teeter who will pass it back to him. Bounces off his stick and Goss is all over him. Picked off by Gilton and Scott with the big swing. Gilton and holds under. Tries to sprint past Teeter, does so. Shot just a little bit wide. Gonna come all the way back to Spanger. We've got now another call. It's gonna be uh, through the crease, I believe. It's gonna be Barry Ball as uh, Giltman ran through the crease and came back into the play. Barry comes up slowly with it and Shane Scott will give it off to Caleb Wiles. We're nearing the midway point of the fourth quarter in the officials timeout where you know the Cyclops are gonna get a 
earful of what they need to do from Jeremy Talibi, who's going to try to find oh, a way to get them back. What is now a five-goal lead? Caleb Wiles, you cannot shut this man out. He rears back and flings it through the feet of Brady. Well, I don't think he really did fling it. He took a little bit 14, off. 14, 23 through. But this is set up with a couple nasty fakes. He faked the shot a couple times and then fakes like he's going to rip it and then That's takes true. it off at the end. But he faked a couple. There, there were some big fakes. They got full me too as he hung on. Just the amount of force that was on the fake before passing off to Teeter. He gave about three or four for Crawley to look at. And then when he saw that big windup, I think Crawley got ready for the save and it was a change up shot. It was a change up and here comes the ball. Gillen pulled the ball out on the face off. Barry got it. They run up and he gets a shot off. He is flat. Hard work there by Smith trying to get it back. It eventually bounces away. Everybody loses their sticks. Sticks there. are flying everywhere tonight. Masson lost his. Petrie lost his, and Barry comes up with the ball. Spencer James will bounce it over to Shane Scott and head off the floor. Petrie could find a dance partner. He's going to go tonight. There's a shot a little bit wide by Monroe. It's picked up just before it heads into the Southwest bench by Caravello to save them 12 seconds where they have a shot. And we're going to have a penalty call to Barry. Illegal substitution. And the Cyclops are going to have an ideal chance to start the comeback. They trail 12 to 7 with 6.57 to go. It is the official's timeout. Yeah, it's only the very years. Saw Jesse Crackle and Jeremy Talibi working out their, their speech, if you will. And you can see it there on screen as they get in the middle of the huddle. Of the play. It will be a power play play. Uh, Barry with all the momentum here. Stemmed a little bit by that call. They just, that's just a uh, just a mistake getting their men out there. There was no real pressure on them. They had plenty of time to set up. Southwest will take the ball. Six fifty-seven to play. And now, after the team huddle, you can see the uh, Southwest players have a little chat amongst themselves. Jordan Critch leading the talk. Childer Hose is having some words with him for what they're going to do. Greg McGregor is down with all the crease on the left side. And Hessel down with Brady for Southwest. They're still talking as they get down there. Keen and Hessel tying our so. Coker and Crawford up top on the on the penalty kill. You're out for Barry, Ray, and James. Two Brampton low. boys, sorry. There's Critch over to Keane. Keane's going to come across the middle. Looks like he's going to shoot but pass it off. And there's the shot by Childerhose. That goes wide up into the stands. Spencer James sprints to the bench so somebody can come off the floor, onto the floor. And Lev Dinelli tries to get it to him. It's Modulo was the guy off the bench, and he almost wound up with it, but instead, Gilson takes it, and he'll run it up into the offensive zone, give it off, and switch. Hesseltine cradling. Keen has it. Barry knows, so they're just going to go ahead. The hidden ball trick not working. They've tried it a couple of times to no avail. Critch behind the back, not much of a pass. May have been tipped by Crawford. It's loose. Goss just kind of gets in the way. Now he's trying to pick up the ball. Shot clock expires. Here comes Barry up the other way. Ray sprinting, splits a couple of defenders, has Critch on him, spin move on him, falls, keeps cradling, shovels it across. Great play over to Scott. Shane Scott dropped it, realized he'd better pick it up after that effort by Johnny Ray and gets possession of the ball back. Keen tries to check him, but Scott gets away from him, switches hands. Now he goes to the one hand, swim between, between Keen and Critch. Great job by Shane Scott. He's done an excellent work tonight. And now he'll just tuck it in behind the net oh, with two seconds left on the 30 seconds. Even clock. the dump away was gorgeous. It was. Just rolled it one hand along the boards. Southwest using their timeout here? Yeah, they are with 5.28 to go. They're on the power play. 31 seconds to go on it, so they're going to try and get something rolling. You know, you might as well in this situation. Um, you do like to have that power, that that timeout for late in the game, but Jeremy Talevi obviously believing he needs to set something up here. 
five goals down, 5.28 to play, pull out all the stops. Yeah, Crawley's made his way to the bench. Looks like just for a drink as he stays in the change box there, but I think on that last, after they came out of the last uh, official's timeout, there was a lot of chatter down on the bench, on the floor rather, and then the ball ended up getting shot away by Childerhaus. As uh, I think Jeremy Talevi just wants to make sure that everybody's on the same page here. Critch will start with it back in their own zone as Crawley returns to the cage. Here comes Southwest up the floor, Jordan Critch starting with it. Straight over to, to Childerhose. Now Critch gives it to Keane. They're gonna just move it around the perimeter start. Now they start creating something down low. Childerhose throws it to nobody and Rob Koger will accept the gift. Turn around, try and run past Hesseltine. And again off a timeout, Southwest throws the ball away. Gets up into the offensive zone, past the restraining line, just five seconds left in the penalty. Koger should be able to kill it. Swim move between a couple. He's cradling it in one hand, dances along the restraining line, takes a huge chop from Giltman, and now another one from McGregor while he's laying on the floor. Now he tries a corkscrew check on Giltman, which just happens to hit him in the chest with the stick. I'm sure Koger didn't mean to get even there. I think Koger showed some great discipline not to go and just drill somebody as he came off the off the car. Well, he was double teamed, he beat that, and then triple teamed, and he almost beat that too. That pass doesn't connect in front. And Barry gets the ball back. Nice job by Tompkinson. 10 counts on here. It's getting close. They've got three seconds to get over. Two, one, they make the pass. Nice job. Smart heads up play by Ross Smith. Caleb Wiles hits the cutter, shot scores. Oh, Tompkinson again. Oh, and what another great pass by Caleb Wiles. He's only got one goal, but he has been an artist with the stick as usual. And Zach Tompkinson tucks that one in. My goodness, another beautiful pass from Caleb Wiles as it comes 21, in 14, 8. And how about the finish from Tompkinson? I think he's looking bounce shot there. It just ends up bouncing it in the net, then goes back up to make sure it ripples the mesh so it counts. But Tompkinson, he's been an offensive force now. I think he's got more goals in the last two games than he's had his entire three-year Sealax career. Yeah, a couple of goals tonight and an assist. The scoring really spread out about the both teams. Here comes Raleigh to the bench. bench now. And Miller Rusbridge can't take that pass. Desperation time for the Southwest Cyclops. Spanger goes to the net, shoots, that one's a little wide. It bounces away. It's gonna go over to Rustbridge though. He takes a bit of a whack. There's a pass down low, the hard shot by Petrie. He just threw that one as hard as he could. Here's the outlet pass. It's gonna be an empty net for Jason Crawford who will finish off, and I believe it's gonna be a hat trick for him. That is a hat trick, and uh, it's all sprinting for Jason Crawford. Look at this pass by Angus Dinley hitting him in stride. 25-44. at home, 14 to seven. Barry Blizzard fans get excited. The Creators Cup will not be at the ILA this year. That's the first time it will be at the Barry Molson Center unless a miracle Something happens. Something miraculous <laughs> happens here. Southwest Cyclops. First off, Patrick McCrory has to win this face off. You know, Gillen's just gonna clamp down and try and Scram, scramble it, scramble it. Gillen may have been a bit early. And now with a seven goal lead, heads on a swivel. Although, although Crawley's gonna come to the bench again, they're gonna play for the win. Yeah. Ball comes to Goss, who's the sixth man. And Ron Ruff said that at the uh, at the halftime break. He said he credited Southwest for playing for the win at the end of their season. They're doing it here again. Here comes the pass across to Keene. He's gonna go sub shot, scores. Oh. I think that one tips off the stick of Koger, but Keane's been, I think that's a hat trick for Keane now too. It I is. I was gonna say he's been that quiet. It's a quiet hat trick if you can score a quiet hat trick. Yeah, you see the change in direction off the stick of Koger and finally a bit of a dance there. He didn't see that one, but uh, maybe too little, too late. We'll see what next up for Southwest is win this draw. Yeah, the last one they got on a uh, technical violation. It's A.J. Masson actually battling for this one. He flips. Shoulder hose. Throws over. So no Corey or, or Gillian. I Gillen. think Masson was the guy that drew that out, but it was Giltman 
That hung on and Crawley to the bench again. We'll go six on five again. Critch takes the pass up top. Watch Petrie and James in front of the net. They're jousting. You have an illegal substitution. Three, four, five, six. Oh, the old seven on five play. Crafts blowing the whistle <laughs> down. Jason Crawford is saying, uh, or AJ Masson passing up to Crawford, who wants his fourth goal. Yeah. Instead, it's going to be a power play. No play on like soccer and rugby here, but. Jay Priest is back in the net, probably because he's a faster sprinter. Well, and Crawley's Crawley. made about six sprints yeah. in the last two minutes. Crawley is standing at the bench. She is breathing pretty hard. She can Colson once again over to the box. 2.47 to play. Southwest will be short-handed for most of it. Aries on the power play. They know they don't need to score. They're going to take their time. Caleb Wiles just staying up top until somebody comes to pressure him. He's going to hold on to the ball. Now Giltman comes up. He's still got it. Now he passes over to Shane Scott. Caravello's down low. Scott comes back up to Wiles instead. Spanger comes out to push. So they move it down to Teeter low. That pass is a bit wild, but it's tracked down by Caleb Wiles. He's just going to roll it down the floor as the 30-second clock expires. Southwest in no hurry to pick the ball up. And now they're telling Priest to just go back to the net. They're not going to go for the five on five with the extra attacker. Blair Goss will pick it up once the play is blown in, which it is. Southwest not showing a lot of urgency. You get the sense they realize. I mean, they're no dummies. It's 14 to eight and there's 2.08 to play. Yeah, you don't get to play at this level by picking up a stick yesterday. Keen. Trying to set something up. He's got the double team with Koger and Maudsley. Fighting his way through. Gets stood up by Koger and Maudsley comes in for the hit. And Keen lets it fly into the stick of Dinley with two on the shot clock. One left on the penalty. There's the pass up. A little lob by Tompkinson. He and Goss get into it a bit. And then cooler heads prevail. And Tompkinson heads to the bench. Goss is back playing D. The lob passed to Monroe. He's down there with Teeter behind the back, tries to hit Monroe in the pass. Nadelko gets there to break it up, and Caravello has it five to shoot. He's got it behind the net. Priest comes in to double team him, and he steps into Priest. Priest gives him a bit of a cross check now, knocks the ball out of his stick because he wants the ball. He's looking for somebody to pass to. He throws it up to Hesseltine. Yeah, He's still trying to score, 114 to go. Without the pull the goalie move, is Priest the smartest <laughs> idea to get back in here? <laughs> Good point. <laughs> That one almost picked off by Caravello. That was flung up towards oh, him. What a play. You gotta see who that was. Ross Smith with of the great pass. Is. Of course, Caravello just circles around. He flings it over. Less than a minute to play here. The towels are waving over in the crowd. They were handed out to the oh, oh, end of the bench. And uh, Coulson didn't go crazy on Maudsley, and Maudsley will just roll it into the corner with seven seconds on the shot clock. Well, he saw the numbers of Maudsley. Yeah. I think that was why this place is going off. It's been a long time since Barry had something to cheer about in lacrosse, and Creators Cup Championship will be here on Sunday. 2 p.m. start. Make sure you're with us, because it's gonna be a great one. A little cross-handed shot by Critch. That one goes wide, 12 seconds to play. The countdown is on. Well, it's a showdown that's been coming for a couple of seasons now. The Oswegan Demons, the Barry Blizzard. And this time they'll do it with gold on the line. Two teams that have a hate on for each other. The long pass at the buzzer. Priest catches it. He'll just hold on to that ball. And the Barry Blizzard will celebrate a well-earned 14 to eight semifinal victory. They're on to the Creators Cup. Jordan Critch and Michael Teeter share a bit of a hug. Caleb Wiles and Dan Keen, a little tap of the gloves. Keen's got his glove off. What a play, what a game for the Barry Blizzard. They came in as pretty heavy favorites, having won five in a row, while Southwest had lost three in a row, and uh, they lived up to the billing. Yeah, they put the shenanigans away, and they got down to play lacrosse. This is how you have the final answer as, uh, they don't normally give up a lot of goals. Their relentless defense and Angus Donnelly coming into play tonight. Again, just allowing eight goals for the Cyclops. I thought Crawley did okay until the yeah. last about seven minutes or so in relief of Jay Priest. Good show by Jay Priest being the first guy in the handshake line. 
and uh, he's having some words with Rob Blaisdell burying the hatchet. Our third star of the game, Eric Giltonen, the defender, transition man for the Southwest Cyclops. He was just a force all over the floor. Didn't to, uh, didn't show up on the scoreboard with no points for penalty minutes, but he was certainly working hard. Well, you, with the defensive game that we saw for the majority there, uh, you knew it was going to come from a defense or a transition guy. We go transition second star with Jason Crawford with the hat trick, of course, a couple of those empty net goals, but he played a huge job in the defensive zone as well. And then he did. He was doing first. a great job anyway. Caleb Wiles, one goal, the late one, but the four assists, three of them on absolutely gorgeous passes. And, uh, you know, he, he's well worth that win. And now, we're not uh, done. Here's no, Talibi. over. Talibi having some words for Rob Blaisdell. You can see, and Blair Goss comes over to grab him. Jesse Cracknell has him. Talibi still trying to make his way to the bench. <laughs> that will do it for this uh, this game. There's Masson going to the box, to the net to score a final 14-8. The Barry Blizzard win over the Southwest Cyclops. That will do it. Thanks for being with us for this Canadian Lacrosse League semifinal. Okay, that will wrap it up. The three stars of the game, Eric Gilton and the third star. What a defensive effort for him for the Southwest Cyclops. Jason Crawford, staunch defense and a hat trick, including a couple of empty netters, but he was outstanding in transition for the Barry Blizzard. And then Caleb Wild, one goal and four assists for the, uh, for the Barry Blizzard. He was outstanding. That will do it. We'll be back Sunday to bring you the Creators Cup. Oswegan at Barry, April the 5th, 2 p.m. The game pregame will start at 1.30, so make sure you're on early. Vote for this year's Sealax Awards. Um, go to twitter.com backslash GBI video. They're all there, all the awards. You can vote. Let us know who you think should be all of those award winners. We'll give you our word on who we think it should be in the pregame. We'll let your, your uh, poll results come up, and uh, we'll get to all of it. That will do it. I am Steven Stamp on behalf of my partner, Ale uh, <laughs> Matthew Carrick, for Alex Frazzo and the rest of the JVI crew. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you Sunday at 1.30 from the Barry Molson Center.